Usually this introduction is high energy because we're super excited to bring back another episode of the podcast. But this time we're back from AdeptCon and we're all alone in our basement in the podcast known as Trapped Under Plastic, the podcast where we catch up with Andy and Sid who have buried the hatchet and sit in a basement and reminisce about their new favorite toys as their childhood toys take over the world. That was a longer one. That was a longer one. And it took me about a sentence into it to realize it was a Toy Story reference. Uh, <laughs> it's like Andy, Andy and, and Sid. Because we know people mm-hmm. whose names are Andy and Sid. Okay, hold on. Who's Andy and who's Sid in this situation? Are you well, the, Andy Wardle. Are you the bad boy? No. Oh, oh, oh shit. Or am I, are, you, are you Andy? Are you, I Wait, think, Andy the fucking toy? You know, Andy oh, is the, the one who owns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He writes his name on their boots. Right. You don't really see much of him. No, you don't. I mean, it, until like the third one when like he's giving all the toys away to the yeah, little girl. Yeah, and you yeah. see him a little bit more and he's grown up. Yeah, yeah. And the, is, there, is there a fourth one? I, or is it a third I think one? there's a fourth one that's relatively recent. I haven't seen Yeah, it. and he's like all grown up. I've yeah. seen that one. I've not seen that one. Okay, we know more about Sid than we know about Andy, but who are you? You Andy or you Sid? I, uh, I think. Well, let's ask the goody peepees. I mean, like, really, Sid's the cool one, right? So it's like, who's the well, cool one? I mean, one? Sid's the psychopath that blows <laughs> shit up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he's the cool one. I think Daryl Sid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in this this scenario. I like that. What up, John? We're back from Adapticon. In the basement. Woo! We're not in front of a bunch of goody peepees this time. That sucks, man. I wanted every episode to be like that. I couldn't take that. You I could tell, man. Your eyeballs were like fucking twitching like you were on, on drugs. Dude, yeah, it was terrifying. But yeah, I'll talk about that in the preamble ramble. Top live. Yeah. Because today's episode is all about Adepticon. And mm. so what better way to kick it off than to have a, a preamble ramble about what Tup Live was. Uh, we got in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Can we start with that? Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. a fucking hot take. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. So Damon, lovely, glorious Damon, gave us a room and was like 24 people max. And we just we just ignored that rule. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, everybody in. Everybody. <laughs> and then he was like, hey, you know, this happened. We didn't agree to this. That's okay. But let's do it better next time. And I was like, this is the nicest way someone could reprimand me. Nicest way they could just go yeah. slap <laughs> you on the hand. Yeah. No. Yeah. You naughty. <laughs> <laughs> so next year, we have a hookup with a guy named Greg um, who is in charge of the bigger rooms at Adepticon. And so maybe we'll consider getting a bigger one and not break rules. I'm all about getting the room the size of the Golden Demon room. Because my goal in life... <laughs> yeah, Giant has delusions of grandeur. Yeah, my goal in life is to have more people at Top Live than they do at the Golden Demon Awards. <laughs> You're like, listen, here. I think at that point, TendyCon needs to be a real thing. Yes, at that point, I think when that day comes, we should say, look, we need to, we need to find some money. And we need to hire people that know how to do stuff. Yeah. We need a project manager. Yeah. Yeah. We need an event planner. Heidi Bennett. Yeah. Oh, she can God. do all of the things. Oh shit. We can call we should hire Heidi. Yeah, be like, Heidi, you don't have a you don't have like a real job with like responsibility, right? Yeah, you can like, just do our dumb shit. We're like you mold college students' brains to be the next leaders of our of our nation. Yeah. Fuck all that. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> we need you to make something called Tendicon. Okay? <laughs> it's way more important. She's like, all right, I'm listening, <laughs> but I'll, you're losing me. Yeah. So we had, there was a fire marshal outside of uh, the room we were in, not allowing people to come inside the room. I didn't know it was a fire marshal. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, after the event, he was like, yeah, you guys have to probably get a bigger room. Just, just get in contact with Damon. We'll, we'll figure it out ahead of time. And I was like, I did get in contact with Damon ahead of time. Yes. And we still fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like six months. Yeah. We wanted a bigger room. But, it, you know, the fact that Damon hooked us up kind of last minute, he helped us out yeah. um, because I promised everybody that we were going to do it. <laughs> Listen, Damon, <laughs> I already told everybody <laughs> that this is going to happen. So no pressure. <laughs> But then I uh, kind of as a, a homage, I, I, my video this week is kind of a love letter to Adepticon. Mm-hmm. And so I sent him the link to the video. I'm like, hey, Damon, we appreciate you. And all you do could, you know, I'm like, hey, maybe you and could share this with the, you know, all the people that work so hard at Adepticon and be like, look at, look at how much fun and how awesome this event is. We yeah. just want to make it more awesome. Yes. You know, so. We get in there and Scott is losing his shit. Yes. Immediately. Immediately. Like you're we were walking into the room. We weren't even in the room yet. And you said something like, I don't know if I can do this or something. So I 
have this very familiar feeling. It's the same feeling I get whenever I queue for a competitive video game. Oh. And I hear this sound that's like, you have now found a match. And I'm like, <laughs> but as soon as I get into the match, I'm fucking fine. But like the first two minutes and every second leading up to that, I'm sweating goddamn bullets. Yeah. And so the same thing happened with Tup Live. I'm freaking out. I'm like, holy fucking shit, this is happening. And then John was like, Scott, can you do the intro? I'm like, fuck! <laughs> You just get the intro out of the way. Yeah. It's smooth sailing. And then it's fine. So in this week's episode of Warhammer Weekly, uh, Vince Venturello, his pick of the week, they do pick of the week every week where mm. they pick one thing that they're a fan of that they really like, they want to shout out. And they picked, Vince picked the Tup Live episode. Oh, did he? Pick of the week. And the reason he did it was to shit on us. What? I thought he would love the fact that he got shouted out in the episode. Everyone fucking freaked out. Yeah. I mean, Vincey V in the house, right? Yeah. Okay. He, I mean, it's it's the Vince's kind of shit where he does it lovingly. He does it because he loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least that's what I tell myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where he's like, look, uh, you know, they didn't have a microphone so you can hear the questions like we did. <laughs> you know, it was. <laughs> he's like, I told them that. I know. And we're never going to live that down. Yeah, he offered it like the first night of the convention Wednesday because they did their show right after the uh, Warhammer preview thing. <laughs> Afterwards, they were living on cloud nine. They just finished theirs up. Um, their live episode was really cool too. So yeah, yeah. And they, they had a microphone that passed around where you could hear the question. So we're gonna improve. We're gonna improve. Yeah, we got we got room. Only direction to go from here is up. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we get we get shit on by the staff. You know, we get the, the man tries to drag us down. Vinci V is talking crap. You can't hear anything. Fucking Jake and his fucking joke. Jake and his story. Oh, shit. That was my favorite part of Top Live. I was going to ask you what's your favorite part. That's my favorite part. My favorite part is Jake's story. Yeah. Okay. So Jake messaged us during Top Live to, on Discord. Yeah. As if any of us were going to fucking see that while we're recording a live podcast of the episode. You went to the bathroom and yeah. I had already gone to the bathroom and came back. And while Ben Comets was answering a question, uh, Jake came up next to me and was like, "Hey, I have a, I have a question for like the last question of the of the podcast or like a, a hypothetical." And I was like, "Whatever, Jake, fine, run with it." Yeah. And so we get someone asked a question, it's the second to last question. I hand the mic over to fucking Jake, and he goes on his goddamn tirade. <laughs> Last like I don't know what felt like fifteen fucking minutes. I was sitting down in the audience at that point, yeah, no, looking you were, up. You were on the floor, and it was like I was watching, you know, from the tarmac, a plane, <laughs> like going down slowly, and you could see the smoke trails from one of the engines. You're yeah. like, this is not going to fucking end well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And there's no way this is going to be an easy landing. No. And I'm just like, no, Jake. You try, you, so the the thing I respect Jake so much for is you gave him an out. But yeah. he didn't take it. No, he's he like, was like, where, where is this fucking going, Jake? And he was like, let me finish. <laughs> and I was like, wow, respect. Yeah, he's gonna see this thing through. Like, yeah, he's he's in the he's in the what is it like the the big uh, the big murder truck? The dude that put a big cement thing around his. Oh 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 shit! Yeah, around his big uh, big truck or whatever yeah and then he went and destroyed everything yeah yeah and jake yeah. was like i'm already trapped in here this yeah. is my tomb yeah. i am going to burn it all down <laughs> <laughs> i know we give jake a hard time for that and he might be listening to this episode right now but that is gonna go down in infamy as like one yeah. of the fucking greatest things to ever happen on top so like don't sweat it jake it was fucking hilarious it was great it was great and if you listen through that story and you're like what the fuck <laughs> listen to it again and realize it is, it is comedy gold. Yeah. The best comedy is the comedy that it, the the sender didn't know it was going to be funny. <laughs> yeah, unplanned for. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just sitting there, my fucking face in my hand, just like, <laughs> God damn it, what am I doing right now? Okay, my I had a lot of favorite parts. First of all, one of the favorite parts was when we asked how many people is it the first Adepticon. Yeah. And, like, almost every hand in the place shot up. Yeah. Because that means that our hobby is fucking booming yeah, right yeah and there's so many people experiencing adepticon for the first time because i want that place to fucking grow i want it to be bananas big and so much more bigger and cooler and you know they have panels like tandy tandy con was gonna have you know all those kind of things we wanted to have success because yeah, that panels. means all of the stuff that we love there's new people entering people experiencing stuff for the first time yeah. the other thing was a story that i found out after the fact from ben comments so ben and matt sex wish come in and Ben is wearing his Daniel Boone hat, which was freaking weird, which apparently he got from a truck stop. Yes. Which is great. I find out that later that Matt had given Ben a tweezers 
<laughs> okay. Did you hear this story? <laughs> yes. Okay. And this was a setup the whole time to get Ben close to you because they wanted to make a voodoo doll, but in, <laughs> in, in Matt's <laughs> extremely drunken state, <laughs> he thought in order to make the voodoo doll work, he needed one of your nose hairs. Nice. <laughs> so he had, I'm so glad it's never happened. He gave Ben a tweezers, and Ben had the tweezers in his pocket the whole time he was up there sitting next to you. And Matt, in the background, was making weird things. I'm like, man, this Matt's just drunk. And I come to find out later, what he was doing is he was motioning tweezers motions to like remind ben to take out the tweezers and he was like plucking a nose hair he okay. was making like this is benjamin Cantor or ben comets ben comets oh my gosh dude so ben was he was an inside agent this whole time yeah he wasn't even there for the fun of it no he wasn't there he's on a job to answer like important tough questions he was there to steal your nose hairs <laughs> like you just mail them to you ben and so learning that story after the fact i learned it like on like sunday from Ben, he's telling me the story. I'm like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've heard. And I've heard a lot of ridiculous things this weekend. This one takes the cake. Yeah. So, and apparently, ben, Matt, Matt was was feeling no pain that night. And he like, he left because he had to like go to the bathroom or something. And there was a huge, in the middle of the episode, and there was a huge crowd outside that couldn't be let in. Yeah. And I was told by somebody that was out in the crowd that he had this wine glass that was half full. And there's a big garbage can out there. And he just throws it into the garbage can. And it was like glass, glass. Oh, no. <laughs> you hear this like psh, shatter. <laughs> and then he just walks away. What the fuck? Because yeah, he his, left at some point. Yeah, he walked. I think he I My mind tells me that he was so upset that Ben missed his chance <laughs> to take the nose hair. And he's like, my, my grand raging. evil plans are foiled. <laughs> And all he could do was shatter his wine glass and walk away. Goddamn. Yeah. So, tough live. Tough live. I think it was super shocking to me that people wanted to see us after the event. I know. You know, because like I've been to concerts before where like you go outside the venue and line up by like the band's like bus mm -hmm. and like want you want to talk to like the lead singer or whatever you want to talk to. And that reminded me of that kind of situation. I was like, I, you know, I'd, I never would have thought that I'd be the kind of person that people would care to line up for, you know? Right. So that was a super humbling experience. And like one, I did not expect to happen. And we were there for like an hour. I know. And we, we also screwed this up too, because we told everybody, you know, we're, we're finishing up. We're going to get a picture of everybody together. We want to get a picture with all the goody peepees there. Yeah, yeah. And then we're going to go outside and we want to chat and hang out. We can do that afterwards. I did that a little bit. But what happened is as soon as we were done with the picture, we went back and started to kind of like pick up some gear. And then a line started forming in the room. Mm. And so we're like, my brain was like, oh, crap. What about the people that we told to wait for us outside? Catch me outside. Catch me outside. <laughs> and and they, they, they never catched us. <laughs> They never catched us outside. I we appreciate were stuck in there. how you maintain the the improper pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I felt I, like so you know we get a little bit of ducks in a row on that. Um, you know we were thinking we should have got intern Joshi uh, to like grab those people and bring them in. Um, mm. Yeah, instead. maybe. But we had to get out by twelve. Yeah, we, so we, were, we were there for about an hour, which was twelve because they had to break they had to break down the room. Yeah, so for the we class probably we probably should. Uh, we're just like talking about crap that you guys don't care about but we should probably set up the timing of the usage of the room in a way that we have enough time built in there because i think an hour at the end is probably enough too but yeah um yeah. to build in there so then we don't like push everybody out mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. all right we have any oh uh, one other thing i got for the uh um preamble ramble is that uh it's important for me to share why is there like a fingernail on here it's gross <laughs> uh it's important for me to share to, to everybody that i am I am. You can rest easily. Uh, the I'm the three time champion. I saw this. The, what the fuck are you talking about? The three time. The three time free chicken champion. It's three my, time victory chicken champ. Yeah. You playing PUBG or something? No, no, no. Every Adepticon, whoever does better mm. in the painting competition mm -hmm. of of their God damn choosing, it. God fucking damn it, gets chicken paid for by the other on the drive home. Chicken dinner. Winner, winner, Popeye's dinner. Yes. And every single Adepticon, I'm fucking undefeated against this guy. John John is fucking crushing me. Yeah. Th Thank you for bringing it never up. Never does chicken taste sweeter. 
<laughs> and a little bit spicy because you get the spicy mm. Popeyes. You oh, gotta yeah. get the spicy. Oh yeah, and uh, it plays it's, with it's, you. It's the best Popeyes of of the year. Really, is <laughs> is the Victory Chicken Champion okay. Popeyes. Moving on. So this is the gaunt- <laughs> this is the gauntlet. So <laughs> this is the gauntlet that needs to be thrown down, Scott. You have the ability to win a Golden Deep. Oh, thank you. You just need the motivation. Mm. Oh, oh, oh! And when all other forms of motivation fail, okay. Rid- ridicule. You remember, I could get free chicken. Yeah, I need to rise above. I need to rise to the occasion of the free chicken. Yeah, and say, look, all over the social medias, there will be pictures of the new reigning free chicken champion. Free chicken champion. So, I mean. How great! Oh, I just had a great T-shirt idea, right? You know, you have those crazy old like '80s, '90s uh, T-shirts from like you know, like work, uh, work outing '95, yeah. whatever. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. What if it's like 1997 Free Chicken Champion? It's a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I, I think you know, Goody Peepees. We need a T-shirt designer. It needs to look at least proper retro. Kind of like it, 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 you're not sure at first glance, like. You know those shirts where it's like it is a shirt from like a, a a show or a movie or something, but at first glance you don't know it. Yeah, yeah. But it's free chicken champion. Yeah, it's like team building exercise ninety nine. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, so a shirt, a shirt like that for sure. That's yeah. a deep cut, but I that's, that's a deep cut that I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll, we need we need I'll, some design. I'll do it. I'll do it. Fine, fine. Okay, let's have that. I'm in. Okay. All right. Now I understand what that fucking bullet point means. <laughs> what if we painted? Uh, I painted a little, uh, a little lady. A lady. Let me go show you it. Uh, talk for a while. Okay, I'll talk about what I painted. <laughs> I painted a Ravage Star model from the great mini war gaming Dave himself. He sent me over some of the exclusive Kickstarter ones that was like you could only fancy get these weird people, and and the lady is holding space luggage with the, with the tentacle monster coming out of it. So I painted that. That was really fun because it was. Um, my take on kind of a palette cleansing thing, just focusing on painting one or two parts of the model really well and then just phoning and everything else, and the model ends up looking pretty good. Yeah, so did you paint the model that looked like Dave? No, you didn't. I, I saw did the not. thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish, yeah. I painted that in a couple hours, Scott. But I think that was Arnold Lazaro or somebody who painted that. Yeah. So, yeah, I painted that a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was really fun, and it was kind of a reminder of like there's a there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, right? Yeah. Um, and one of them, and from a speed painting perspective, is people don't want to like speed paint and just like make it look like it was speed painted shitty. And so, how do you pull your punches where you pull them, and where do you put in enough ball sack where you look at it and you're proud of it? And that's kind of my process there. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. I also painted up an Eldar Void Scar. So it's been a couple of episodes since we talked about what we've painted. Mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm. was from the new uh, Kill Team box. God, those are really cool looking Eldar. Because they're just, just enough kind of like badass and slightly kind of, are these good guys? Kind of yeah, look. They're Corsairs. The yeah. Piratey. Yeah, I like the pirate look. So that was really fun. I really, really like those models. I had a hard time picking which one I wanted to do. And then I've started painting a... Uh, model I can't talk about and so I guess we'll talk about that probably next episode uh, is it a big boy it's a big boy okay he's a big daddy <laughs> I think we can talk about that if you want to okay yeah well, I don't understand what I'm talking about right in painting form I'm painting a Primark yeah I'm painting uh, which I thought was my very first uh, Forge World resin model that I painted yeah but way back in the day when I first started first started painting first started in AOS I I uh, painted a uh what are those big Morngool? A Morngool. Yeah. For Night Haunt. Holding a horse. Yeah, he's yeah. he's like <clears throat> killing a horse. And yeah. that's a cool model. But that one, like, I bought it secondhand and it was missing some claws and stuff, but it was a legit forge world. It wasn't a recast or anything. Yeah. So technically it's my second one. But man, they're a lot of fucking work. A lot of cleanup work? Uh no. A lot of it's actually work? like the, the the resin sculpt was really crisp. There wasn't very much cleanup. Um that's but cool. I made a I made a, a fatal error from the very get go that I didn't realize. Until I started priming, I never washed the thing. <laughs> oh shit! You know, so you get the mold release on those yeah, resin yeah. kits, and I did what any uh, goody peepee will do in these situations. When you're priming and you realize the paint's not sticking, just keep fucking. You fucking on. prime harder. <laughs> yeah, you say not today, sir. <laughs> not today. Uh, and also, what I did with that was, I wanted to prime it in chaos black. You can't find that shit anywhere. 
So what I did was I took my Monument Black Primer, which Monument Primer is my favorite primer, and I added some satin medium from Chimera. Okay. So I come with the satin medium. Right. I filled the cup like halfway with black primer and three drops of satin medium, and I, I mix it around. And they're pretty freaking close. Yeah. Approximation. Okay. So you watch Squidly Bits, Squidly Bits, Squidmar, just made a video comparing a bunch of paint ranges. Mm -hmm. And one thing he said in that video was that he didn't like Abaddon Black. I get not liking Corax White. People will hate that ubiquitously. But the black, I really like. I like how glossy it is. I like how satin it is. It's good to have a good satin black. Yeah. Do you not like Abaddon Black? Uh, Abaddon Black is in the color in the pot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The black from GW. Oh, I, oh you're saying that I just primed with that. Oh, no. I guess what you were talking about reminded me of the fact that you didn't like that paint. And so now this is a separate thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. not like Abaddon Black um, to paint with? I, I don't, I haven't used it in so long. Okay. I think I like it for, um, in the shadows. And that was kind of my purpose with this was to have a satin in the shadows because yeah. black, the more matte black is, the more it looks gray. Yeah. The lighter it is. Yeah. And so you really want a striking dark shadow and needs to have a, a little bit of a shine to it, a little bit of satin, uh, look that, you know, if you go up to gloss, it gets even more and more black looking. So I really wanted there to not feel like the shadows were just kind of a desaturated gray. I want it to be more punchy. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, it's the same reason you see why you'd use an Abaddon black versus like uh, a coal black from Procryl or just black from Vallejo or whatever is because you're looking for a different thing. Obviously for base rooms, it's the best. It's the best. Base room black? Base room black. They should just <laughs> rename the thing. Okay. So if you take... Monument primer and you add some chimera satin medium to it. It looks pretty close to chaos black. Yeah, and if you were to just probably use any satin medium, um, I, oh, the only other satin stuff I had was satin varnish, Vallejo satin varnish, and okay. I was like, I don't know if I want to put in varnish in there. Yeah, varnish feels weird. It also might fuck up my airbrush too. <clears throat> so okay, so you ran out of primer mid prime job. No, I didn't run out of primer. Okay. Well, why were you mixing new stuff up anyways? I was mixing up because I wanted that satin darker black. Okay. Because the Monument um, primer matches their paint. So it's a it's a, an exact color match, and their their paint is matte. Okay. So it was... Whenever I prime with that, it's solid, but it, it almost looks slightly dark gray because okay. it's matte. Okay. Um, what I painted, I brought some minis to Golden Demon and Vince kind of picked up which ones I should put in the case. And he, he picked a Cawdor miniature that I painted, I don't know, like four years ago. And how, do, how do you pronounce that? Cawdor. Cawdor! There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I did my entry on Golden Demon. It specifically said Caw and then in parentheses bird sound, door, <laughs> which I don't know if anyone cared about that. <laughs> this is not the place for jokes. <laughs> I learned that one. Oh, speaking of, I know who Chris Borer is. There was an entry in the open category, Golden Demon, a Redemptor Dreadnought by Chris Borer. Uh, I believe he is a... He had the, the trident arm? Yes. Okay. The blue and white one. I believe he was a... I think he's a rules tester. He's a US rules tester. Rules? I don't know if he's an official employee, so that kind of makes no sense. But anyways, I painted that guy for like 30 minutes at Adepticon, fixing up things that Vince told me to fix up. Okay. It probably made literally no difference. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, it was 30 minutes. Um, then I spent a couple of hours painting this little lady. My first ever pinup from Kingdom Death Monster called Elf. I love a good simple name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. And uh, the TMM on it, it it's... It Thank really you. pops. Yeah. It's a tiny little line. Jam. I know. It. Holy oh. cow. Imagine doing that as a non-metallic metal. That'd be fucking so grief. Yeah. Like you, you couldn't, maybe you have to have the, you have to have like a black, uh, black lining and then like immediately go up to bright. Kind of. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun painting that model. I think one thing just totally unrelated to the fact that it is a pinup. When you paint a model, that's just a super different subject matter than like, a war torn like veteran in space. Um, <laughs> just the fact that like the the subject matter changes so much, you just kind of think in a different way and paint in a different way. Yeah. And so I really liked uh, just trying out something totally different than what I normally do because I made a bunch of choices that I wouldn't otherwise normally make. Um, so I think on that note, if you guys have like a a, a model that you'd want to paint from a totally different like universe or like aesthetic that you normally do, you should just try it out because you might find that you're just making a bunch of different choices that you wouldn't normally make just because of the model's character. Mm. But yeah, she's got big boobs. That she does. Big eyes. That she does. Big I eyes, like, thick thighs. I like the freckles. Oh, thank you. I, I like think the freckles look way more intense 
in a picture than they do in real life. They're, mm-hmm. they're a lot more subtle. And actually, I want to talk about freckles in the after party um, because I had a, a method that I did, which I thought looks good in, in the hand, um, but it looked a little too intense in, in photos. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, you need to look at it real close. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I use that moss stuff. From, yeah, yeah, dude. I thought it's I love, great, dude. I love that shit. The way it dries is super interesting. That, I use that on my base for my Golden Demon piece. Nice. And it's it's great how it, um, one, it interacts with water. Mm-hmm. So you can actually feather it with water, which you're like, oh, this stuff doesn't look like it's water. So all really? It is. Oh. And then how building up multiple layers like increases the vibrancy more and more. I didn't try that. It's a little like funky texture to it. Nice. That's how it looks more and more like moss. Did you use the moss, not the rust? Or both? I use just the moss. Yeah. I use different rust products. I have a bazillion different things. <laughs> okay. I use some enamels on that, and then I just use some good old uh, uh, scrag brown mm. for the rust on the base. Okay. That's what we painted. What did you paint? Okay, if I can add time. Quit, quit talking. We can't hear you. <laughs> we can't actually hear what you painted, but you can put it in the comments. Wait, wait. Wh- speak up. What are you saying? You painted a space marine? What? What color? Blue? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> this portion of today's podcast is brought to us by Broken Anvil Miniatures. And I know you're saying we've heard you guys talk about them before, but we got something new and exciting to talk about. And that is their new game coming live to Kickstarter, Rivenstone. We got a chance to demo this game at Adepticon. And I don't know if you remember, John. Do you remember who won that demo? Do you know how badly I beat you in that demo? Pretty badly. For months, Broken Anvil has been previewing the art, sculpts, and rules of this exciting new game, and the community hype is very strong for its release. So mark your calendars, because on April 26th, Rivenstone is coming to Kickstarter. Set in a fantasy world where magic is a physical resource which grows in great crystalline deposits called Rivenstone, players can collect, paint, and play their personal war band of miniatures as they battle each other for control of the crystal. Oh, I almost forgot the crystals. The crystals. So when we played a game, it was really quick to pick up and learn, but I was feeling that there was a ton of depth and strategy I couldn't quite grasp yet that my smooth brain couldn't quite figure out. But with a little bit more time, I'll get there. The art style of the game and its models is unique, a blend of high fantasy and wild magic. There are factions such as Shattered Empire, which feature knights bolstered by arcane prosthetics wielding gun blades. These warriors might face off against a faction such as the Oryx, massive orcs who tame wild prehistoric looking beasts and ride them into battle. Best of all, the starter boxes, which contain up to 14 models and all the tokens, measuring tools, cards, and rules needed to play will be available for only $99 dues. You can sign up for their launch reminder and learn more info at rivenstonegame.com. You can find all that information linked in the description or show notes below. Shout out to Broken Anvil for sponsoring this episode. Now back to the main topic. All right, let's crack it open. Adepticon 2022, three years since the last one, 2019. God damn, it felt good to be back. I know, because everyone's like, oh, it's been two years. No, bitch, that's not how math works. Yeah. Because we missed two. That means we had one, missed a year. Missed the second year, and then the third year we're back. That's three calendar years. 2019 plus three is 2022. That is three. That is how math works. Yes. Okay, Uh, we were rolling up into fucking the Schomburg Renaissance Hotel, whatever the fuck it's called, and someone was playing The Boys Are Back in Town, and I was so fucking hyped. I know. (laughs) That was it. Like It was so weird. Like The drive went by really quick. We had to stop for honey mustard. We tried to find... (laughs) No, dude. No, dude. We started, okay, we went to Woodman's. Okay, I don't know how many of you guys know what Woodman's are, but I showed these fucking Minnesotan boys Woodman's, the fucking best grocery store in the world, and it was massive. Okay, I forgot. When you pay for stuff at Woodman's, you can only do it with a debit card. And I don't know what my fucking pin is. No, who fucking knows a pin? So I was standing there, my guy in honey mustard, and I was like, I can't pay for this because like, we, we forgot the mustard. <laughs> and some old lady behind me in line was like, I'll pay for it for you. And I was like about to fucking cry. It was so special. And she busted out her goddamn coin purse and started pulling out cash and coins. And she paid for it for me. Only, only in Wisconsin at a grocery store the size of a fucking Ikea <laughs> is an old lady behind you going to pay for your mustard. Yeah, I loved it, dude. And so it was while amazing. S- while Scott was mustard shopping, <laughs> yes. Sexy Teeth Josh and I went to the liquor place. Well, first of all, we had to find it. Because yes. I felt like fucking Noah lost at sea, <laughs> and I didn't know where the hell to go. We walked through the whole fucking store. Finally, I found a, a member that works there. A member that works a there. A member. <laughs> a member that works there. And I start asking him a question and I turn around and I realize this might just be a guy in a sweater vest <laughs> and he doesn't work here. 
He didn't have a name tag on. I asked where the liquor department is, yeah. and he gave me directions. It was like fucking, he was rummaging around. Yeah, he. It was like it was like sending Frodo to send the fucking ring into the mount, mountain of doom and shit. Like yeah. he, the directions he gave me were like this long, gnarled passageway. I'm like, just give me the fucking eagle to ride on, man. <laughs> this would be so much faster. We make our way to the liquor store. Yes, and the liquor store inside of the grocery store is the size of a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> it was massive, and so I was like, I learned my lesson the first time. I'm going to go find a, a member that works there. <laughs> a, member, a member that works there again. Yes. First thing, I beeline to this guy. And I'm like, sir, do you carry the alcoholic Mountain Dew? And his response was great. He goes, oh, I wish. <laughs> he's he's and, like an aficionado of all mixed drinks. He proceeded to tell me how the different regions of America are, are releasing it at different times. And he's like, so if you go to the southeast in Florida, Louisiana, Georgia, they have it. We're scheduled to get it roughly six months from now. I'm like, you're killing me. And, he, and, and then I'm like, okay, I, I appreciate it because otherwise I was going to look through this entire fucking place looking for the Mountain Dew. Right. So we didn't get any Mountain Dew. And then we did buy some other things and we went to checkout. And my mind was blown yet again. Mm. Okay. Self-checkout at the liquor store. Oh, yeah. They I have self-checkouts at the liquor store. It's amazing. And there's one lady that actually works there. She's a member that works there. And she was over in this like glass cage compartment thing checking out this other dude. And she looks over and she's like, can I see your ID? And I'm like, from here? And she's like, yeah. And I hold it up. She's like 40 feet away from me. She says, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. I think, I don't know if it was just like a, it was like a test. I was okay. like, you know, how, what was I going to react with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I check out. And I go to throw the receipt in the garbage can, and there's a crisp single dollar bill in the garbage can. It keeps like, getting better and better. This this Woodman's is like Shangri La. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I would have had the dollar, I could have given it to you to buy the mustard. There it is. Oh, full circle. Okay, so if you're ever you know near a fucking Woodman's, you should go inside because one, people pay for your groceries. Mm -hmm. Two, you find free money. Mm -hmm. And three, the fucking alcohol people are the most knowledgeable people in the goddamn store. Yeah, you can just buy whatever you want. Yeah. Really, at yeah. any age. Yeah. And just flash your blockbuster card and they won't they'll be like, all right, you're good. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Wait, is that a blockbuster card? Fuck yeah, dude. 1997 is laminated and everything. <laughs> uh, all right, what the fuck are we talking about? This is not even adapted con. This is, God, <laughs> this wood, is this a car is, ride. This is Woodman's, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I, I the whole ride went fast. It was, I mean, we shared in the last episode the whole fucking Dairy Island story. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's stories on the trip. But. I said, like, as we were pulling into Schaumburg, weren't yet able to see the hotel and convention center. Like, it doesn't feel real yet, right? It doesn't feel like we're actually going to do Adepticon because it's been so long. It's something I've wanted for so long. It's actually coming true. Mm -hmm. And not until we cranked, the boys are back in town, and we pull in. You can see the whole place. You can see all the nerd cars. You can smell their sweat yes. coming out of the cars. Yes. Like, that's when we knew it was real. We pull up. There's some fucking poor gamer has a goddamn tote full of minis yes. on his cart, and he oh, goes no. over the curb, and the <laughs> thing <laughs> fell over, and all his minis, the minis didn't fall off, but the fucking the entire tote fell off of his cart, and I was like, oh no, dude, no, that's not the way to start, no. man. You're not even in there. Yeah. I'm in there. Like, yeah, he had them stacked way too tall. Yeah, he's like one of those. Like, he was a, a, a serious gamer because he had one of these little giant little trolley things that had a like the luggage where you pull yeah. the handle up. The, he had a Costco uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, he had them stacked like eight deep. I'm like, son, you, you can't get away with that. Of course, he goes over little bumpies on the curb, G -G. you know, so, so uh, blind people know that that's the curb. The grippy thingies. Yeah, the grippy thingies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he hit those and it was like, brrr. yeah, it was like mountainside. And it was like slow motion fall, too. Yeah. It was like, we saw it. We're like, no. <laughs> and he just looks at it like, oh, God damn it. Like, not again. <laughs> there goes yeah. all your towel. Yeah, yeah. So we, got, we started off pretty fast I mean, it was exciting already right and we got inside did our whole thing and then i think it felt real once we were like in the rotunda and went up to that second floor where the lobby is for whatever goddamn reason yep and then uh signed into our room and i was like got okay. free fudge yeah dude we got free fudge from uranus yeah uranus makes the best fudge mm -hmm. a goodie pp came up to us so like you guys chris i think chris yeah. yes uh, and i saw him again later he gave me more fudge nice <laughs> i mean you have my fucking fudge by the way oh yeah i put it in the freezer Oh, nice. I put it in the freezer. I'm Give it to me it, now. I'm keeping it safe. Uh, I also didn't bring the fucking meat that I was telling you going to bring for you for like three months. God damn it. <sighs> okay. One of these days I'll remember. <coughs> so we got free fudge. And that's where I knew it was real. It was like we just got upstairs right away. Goody pee pee saying, I, I figured you guys would like this. 
it's fudge from Uranus. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's a poop joke. Yeah. We like it. Yeah. We're in. We're we, in. We've arrived. We've, we're here. <laughs> we're here. And then we take forever to check in. So Joshy is waiting for us to come with the cart. Yeah. And, and he finds one because it's been like 30 minutes. He fills the whole thing up like the guy from Annie. And he's like <laughs> waiting for us with a full cart, full trolley, sitting by the car waiting for us because he drove. And we're just like, yeah, this is pretty easy. Nice. We just... We just Pull the whole thing in, get up to our room, and that was it. That was that the was official it. start of the con. Yeah. We just, we checked all in. It was super easy. You dropped all our stuff off, and then we just started roaming. Right. We're roaming. We found uh, Eric Swinson. He was the first victim. Yeah. We talked to Eric right away, and then Eric had a class already, I think, mm -hmm. that day. Yeah. It was wild. I was like, Eric, quit working so hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. These guys that teach classes. They just work all weekend they're long. They're just fucking working. And we never get to see any of them. I know. That's it. Like, I want to spend mm. way more time with Vince. Vince is like trying to, you had to put like time on his calendar it's yeah like, i can i can fit you in for 12 minutes right here <laughs> Vince, right at a fucking convention <laughs> but dude the first thing was sick because everything was getting set up it was wednesday yeah. right yeah and so the first thing we went is we, we we snuck into the room where the gw games were being played and also the preview was yes and everyone was still setting up all the gear and i kind of wandered over to where the live stream guys were and one of the guys knew me and let me behind the booth so I could see all the gear and he could like like run it all down for me and that was super fucking cool and I got that guy's email and we've been chatting about like live stream stuff since the con so I kind of oh. you know get some advice from my live stream but it was super cool to kind of hear like an expert kind of talk about like all the stuff and he showed me his setup he had like a monitor with like 16 different camera angles on it so we could see Whoa! them all. He could just like alt tab through all of them. Yeah, it was it was it was so cool. I got so much inspiration from that. And then while I was doing that, you were fucking chatting up with Byron. Yeah. From Artist Opus. Yeah. So yeah, but Byron, what a nice fucking guy he is. I've, yeah, dude. I've known him for a while. Um, we, he worked with me on the, the dry brush set, um, which he didn't bring any of to Adepticon like a chode. Sorry, Byron. <laughs> Um, so he's like, you know, and all their staff people. I got to meet all the different staff people from the Artist Opus booth because they have just amazing British accents. I just like to talk to them. Yes. And they're like, man, we should have brought some of your. That's not how their accents are. We should have brought some of your dry brush sets. Everyone's asking about them. <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dang it. You shut up. But then Byron took us on a, a behind the scenes look. We yeah. got to go into the vendor hall. Yeah. Before it was set up. A Wednesday afternoon, you got to like see everyone just like there's like chickens with their heads cut off. I everyone know, in there was just running around, yeah, getting their booth set up. Yep, and it, it was just like it's crazy to see how massive that room is. Yes, when it's not all set up. Yeah, it's fucking huge when you're in there. But like when you see how big it really is when there's nothing in there, it's like holy shit. Yeah, and he showed us some some crazy stuff that they're coming out with. Yeah, he, some products. It was awesome. I, see, I never, I had never known of. His magnum opus to dry brushing, yeah, which you shared in your video, and I was kind of like, you know, there's definitely some merit to this this thought. So he was showing us paints, brushes, this new palette thing that he had, and I was kind of like, I was I was there for it. It was yeah. sick. He's and you see the stuff he's done with only dry brushing, like the quality that he can pull off with that stuff is bananas. It and, is kind of crazy, and it is a science of the the moisture level and how you work the brush, when and how to clean it, and all this kind of stuff. Like it's a whole other it's a whole other world. World. yeah um in my video that came out this week I, I show a little bit of a breakdown of of how he works and did a little uh demo with my own voiceover and uh <laughs> and uh, it was just it's he's really passionate about it so it's really really cool um yeah he is so and he's got all sorts of grand ideas and all these different cool things yeah he yeah he do. was putting a bunch of free product in uh in jake's hands and he was like i was hoping he was gonna give it to me <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> then he took the, it away at the end he was like give me that back <laughs> jake <laughs> So yeah, so that was that was the first night, and uh, well, that's the start of the first night. The end of the first night was fucking legendary. <laughs> yeah, we had the whole fuck. We had just like a crew, uh, like ended up in our room. Yeah, um, and, and who's the who's who? Yes, right. we had Vince there. We had fucking Casey, Casey, Goobs, Eric. I think Bill from Berserker Works was there. Yeah, Bill was there. Bill and was there. You and I eating and our, our crew. God yeah. damn, fucking Bill and Eric eating all our snacks, bro. Dude, those guys are snacks hounds. Here's the thing. Uh, Canadians love snacks. Yeah, they're snack lovers. And booze, yeah. by the way. <laughs> they love that as well. So, And then later on the convention, I was talking to Eric. This is a side note, but it ties in here. And I was like, I said something about you Canadian guys. And he's like, you think I'm from Canada? 
I'm, I live in New Jersey. I'm like, you're from Canada, aren't you? And he's like, yeah, I'm from Canada. <laughs> I'm like, I can tell, Eric, your voice is super Canadian. He's like, no, it's not. I don't talk like I'm from Canada at all, eh? <laughs> and uh, I just fucking love that dude. He's so cool. He was so cool. He was, yeah. he's such, uh, him and Bill were, were great to get to know and, and to hang out with. And we got to see all these other guys. We got to hang out with Uncle Adam. We got to hang out with Danny from Miami, Fuck yeah, AKA dude. 3D Printing DM Danny. We got to hang out with Raquel from Rack Arcs. We got to hang out with Lila from Lila's Minis. Mm -hmm. I know I'm missing a whole bunch of other ones, but. Um, I think those were all the YouTubers that were there that we know of. Oh, the 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 one, the only, the legend, Kenny Boucher. I mean, Kenny Boucher, dude. Bro. Yes. Yeah, we got to see him. Um, all sorts of uh, amazing people we got to hang out. But more importantly than all those scrubs is all the amazing goody peepees that came up. To Absolutely. Us. It was wild. Um, I expected it was like, oh, you know, occasional people come up to us and talk to us. But it was just like everybody... The first day, Thursday, Sexy Teeth Joshi and I made a plan. I can't remember what you were doing that we were going to do the full thorough run of the, the vendor hall. Like, we're going to dig deep. We're going to get in there day one so they're not sold out of shit and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me six hours yeah. to go through the vendor hall. Yeah. Um, so many cool people. And I was like getting to talk. <clears throat> people come up and start conversating. Yeah, dude. And just talk about everything. And, and it was so fun. And I was like, God, I never got sick of that. I yeah. just like you think it's like, oh, you know, we do this for four days and people chatting with whoever comes up and talks to you about whatever. Like, I would do that. Yeah, dude. Everyone's got kind of like unique perspectives and takes. And you might ask people the same questions that you asked like the previous people that walked up to you. But everyone's got, you know, different answers. And it's it's super fun to meet everyone and, and chat with them. Yeah. So that was that was that whole experience. How was your then, voice after the con? Because mine was noticeably lower. Like yeah. I had like a, a throat thing. Um going into saturday night i was a little bit worried because mm -hmm. my voice i could feel a little bit of strain i'm like oh man we're gonna be doing top live we didn't have acoustics set up with mics so that would be projected so i thought we we're gonna have to talk a loud volume yeah the footy the goody peepees the footy peepees <laughs> the footy peepees they're the ones that like soccer um the footy peepees were like super fucking quiet yeah. And so we could just talk at this volume and they could all hear us just great. Well, they're, they're doing good. Yeah. Like I think Jake mentioned something about making noise. Yeah. And, you know, they, they all took that to heart. So they laughed when there was a joke, but then they were quiet otherwise. Yeah. So was I, was, awesome. I was worried that Sunday I was just my voice going to be shot. And it wasn't. I could feel a little bit of strain. But, you know, this this instrument has been tuned for years of yelling. <laughs> the, the vocal cords. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I could I could fucking rip it loud if I need to rip it, and okay. I was like, oh, I didn't need to do it. Yeah. Didn't do you want Do you want to walk through each day of the con as a highlight, or do you want to like hit specific questions? Uh, I, I think we need to go down by category after this, okay, because otherwise it's gonna be seven hours long. All right, all right. Uh, so. I will say that this is a one more f final very important highlight for day one, and we'd be remiss not to publicly shame sexy teeth Joshy. For vomiting. Oh my God. On every square inch of our bathroom. Oh, Joshy. It was everywhere. It was like you went in there with a t shirt cannon filled with vomit and you just went. Doo, 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 doo. It was everywhere. And he didn't tell us. I woke up to piss at like four in the morning. And it was like a slip and slide on my damn feet. And we like Sherlocked Holmes how the whole fucking shit went oh, yeah. down. Yeah, there so was like, clues. Yeah. At some point, he went into the bathroom and came out while we were all hanging out in our room with the YouTube people. And he was, I asked him, I was like, did you throw up? And he was like, yeah, I did. Um, but then like he threw up again a second time. I think after we all went to bed or something. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, that, or I think we left to go do shenanigans outside. We did, but he didn't come with us. Right. That's right. Cause we all, we all went to do some jackass shit at like yeah, yeah. three in the morning. <laughs> yes. He didn't come with us. He went, he stayed there. And, uh, when we came back, oh, that's right. We came back and we're like, what happened? Yeah. Dude. You opened the door and it was like, <sighs> oh yeah. It smelled disgusting. It smelled in there. like bile. It smelled sour and acidic and it was nasty. Yeah. And it's fucking, so he's sexy teeth, Jossie, right? He's got, yeah. he's got, he's got top row of fake teeth. His top row of fake teeth was on the fucking counter <laughs> on top of his name badge, which was covered which was in vomit, covered in fucking puke. And it was just like, this is the most disgusting thing ever. <laughs> And the whole, so what we figured out was the top of the lid was down. It was closed, the toilet. And he threw up on top of it because it like showered down on the sides of the yeah. fucking thing. It ricocheted. Yeah. It was just like. And then later, the next day, 
we we called room service and a poor person who had to clean it and we were we were trying to like work around her schedule yeah so that we could be in there when she wasn't in there and we came back a little too early yes and she was there cleaning and we were like kind of spying on her (laughs) from like like where she was where she was working and she came out and she was visibly disgusted at one point (laughs) she was she was by herself she's walking down the hallway and just shaking her head i know dude i felt so bad for that lady but she she cleaned it up she did a great job and and then Josh quit drinking for the rest of the day. I know. Dude, props to him. He yeah, just stopped drinking. Yeah, he's like, I, I feel, and I think he said it was like on the drive home. He was like, he had this like this moment of of inner reflection where he's like, I just think I don't need to drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like three days removed. That's, and he still was like, uh, that's so funny. I'm like, Josh, you gotta quit mixing vodka into Sunny Delight. That's the problem. <laughs> that's a because lot of sugar. Well, it's not even the sugar. It's the Sunny Delight is so flavor packed. Yeah, that you could mix it fifty fifty with vodka, and you don't taste the vodka. Seriously? Yeah, Sunny D is so strong that it's like he didn't even know. He didn't even know (laughs) until it was too late. (laughs) It's just a point of no return. Remember how fucking loud he was? Oh my god, I had him to shut up so many times. Yeah, because we're all hanging out in the room, and like when he wanted to talk. His decision was to scream <laughs> at the top of his lungs and just act like he was talking at regular volume. Yeah. <laughs> and that eventually everyone would shut up because everyone they, in the room, yeah, <laughs> would shut up because he was screaming so loud and he was telling just a random thing. It was like, Eric, remember when you did that video about <laughs> jousting? That was the coolest video ever. <laughs> and he brought it up like four times. Yeah, he kept telling Eric how much he loved his video about jousting. I watched that video so many times, Derek. I can't believe I'm talking to you. <laughs> that was so fucking obnoxious. But yeah, he fucking quit. He quit it. Did he hit it and then he quit it? Yep, he so done. yeah, props to him. Uh, but fuck yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's break down. Into different uh, let's talk about favorite moments here. Okay. Favorite moments. Okay. I think my favorite moment was definitely okay after Top Live. Mm-hmm. I mean, Vince V put out the bat signal. For us to come look at the golden demon things. Yeah. He was like, shit has happened that has never happened ever. And I was you like, need to get up here now. I was like, dude, Vince is more excited than he's ever been that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yes. And so I got over there and I was wearing my vest that day. And he fucking grabs me by the fucking collar. And he's like, do you see what's going on here? <laughs> this is crazy. And I was like, Vince, what's going on? Like, like uh, earlier or like later, Ben was like, Vince like made like a motion to like punch me in the stomach and he was just joking but like he was so enthusiastic about that that I thought he was actually going to punch me <laughs> and I was like this is fantastic so yeah we, we did the whole golden demon cabinet loop like I don't know two separate days and each time it was like two hours and so mm-hmm. we were I love that just talking shit walking around that case you know talking about painting like hardcore painting it was fucking awesome yeah, just digging deep yeah dude. it just I'll just say like criticizing, but really getting being critical. Yeah, being about critical every single piece. Yeah, and that's not a negative thing. Yeah, it, even of Vince's pieces or Ben's pieces. Yeah, yeah, and everyone's pieces. You're like, look, when things are painted, so many pieces are painted at such a high level. How, just like a judge does, you have to nitpick and just drill into the thing and say, yes. how much is this negative factor in? And there's yeah. just a whole lot of figuring out and people going back and forth and everything yes at that point we had we didn't know what had gotten commended entry commended entry is like top eight or whatever that will be up for demon so he says that shit and the whole time walking up there i'm like oh fuck oh fuck did mine did mine get oh that? Did mine yeah, get that? yeah i didn't know we were walking into whether or not something had gotten commended but that was a new thing yeah right break that down what, what do they do yeah so what they do is they if there's two cuts. The first cut is the finalist pins cut, meaning if you have a finalist pin, that means you've made it past you know the first cut. And wasn't there a sticker thing too? Like you could have a sticker without a pin and then a sticker with a pin, um, or not? No, there's different colored stickers, and there was all a lot of hemming and hawing about what stickers meant. Mm. Like green, if it was it had a green stick, I keep farting. Okay, <laughs> if. If it's got a green sticker, that means it's getting a finalist pin. That was the one that mattered. Okay. If your little entry card next to your piece had a green sticker. If it had a red sticker, that that means that it had been photographed. Mm. Now, not all of them that had green stickers also had red stickers. So we didn't know if that meant something more or less, or if mm-hmm. they were just going through and uh, over time photographing everything that had a green sticker. Right. And then there was, uh, I think it was the yellow sticker. And my piece had the yellow sticker. Yellow sticker meant fragile. 
I mean, like, don't fuck around with it. Yeah. Because it's got little spindly bits or something that might break off. And mine had that because of the the spray, the blood blood oil spray that's coming out of the hoses. Like, you can fucking touch that. By the way, by, when I took my piece out, it had been sitting in my case um, since Adepticon. When I took it out to take photos and oh, no. footage, one of the things had snapped. No. So it was fragile. Um, I actually was able to fix it, and it actually looks better now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that was fine, but don't ever touch that. Um, and then I think there was a blue sticker, and I can't remember what blue sticker meant. It was an internal thing for them, yeah. I believe. I don't know what it meant either. Um, so the first thing was going around and checking if your piece had a green sticker or not. That meant finalist pin. That means you make the first cut, and so it narrows the field down from, let's say, there's 100 pieces in your category. It narrows it down to maybe 50 or 60 of them get a Finalist pin. Now, there's not a set amount of finalist pins per category. It's not like only 25 will get this, regardless of how many are good. It was simply, did it meet some kind of a threshold? It gets a finalist pin. And then from there, they moved it down to top eight, which was the little white card that said commended. Was it top eight specifically? I don't know. I think there was might have been six, seven, or eight or something in my category. Yeah, it was but that. Yeah, that amount. Roughly six to eight yeah. per category. Now, what I'm told is in previous Golden Demons that what they do is they put the top three on the top shelf yes. going into awards. Yes. I don't know exactly the timeline of that, but also because typically these are done at the Warhammer days or whatever when they're only two days long. So mm-hmm. the timing is off from this. And people are surprised to see that that was not how it was done. No. Going into awards on Sunday, the, the last thing of the whole convention, all you knew was that the people that had commended entry could have their name and their picture thrown up there as a winner. To me, that was awesome. Yeah. It, it, it's a double-edged sword, though, because if you know going into it that you were commended but didn't make it, like it doesn't have this big... Expectation. Feel, this big expectation, this big feel-bad moment if you didn't place. Now, right. if you've participated in Crystal Brush, you this is kind of par for the course. Yeah, you That's have how, no idea. You have no idea. All you knew is first cut. It just like this. So you you just a part of that is like this hype. And if you see yours up there, which I did in Crystal Brush, I didn't hear, like that is like the most ecstatic feeling. Right. So one thing I think you're not explaining is that the commending normally commending or commendations were given to people who had like kind of cool things that wouldn't get a golden demon. Mm. But this year it was used as a further like uh delineation between like the next level. So it's like you had people who got pins and then people who got commendations, there was like eight or six, and then they were picked to be top three in that category. So right. each category had like eight commendations, yeah. which is like wasn't normal. Uh, normally, you would see maybe like one or two or three per category for like cool, fun things, but this this was different. It was like it was like this was like a final final cut, yeah, right. And yours had one of those final final cuts, yeah. And so going into that award ceremony, you were like. Well, and also my category was first. So I was like, no, oh, no, no. I, I, yeah. I don't want you to rip the bandit off right away. Oh my God. And they, they ripped it off, bro. Yeah, they were like, so, shink. Yeah. The like, way they announced it, that was kind of a shock too. Yeah. It was like, they, they, they did first, second, third or third, second, first, like right away. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, like slow down. Slow Let down. us clap for these people. I know. But yeah. So they, they called all three up and then we all clapped for them. And he was like, can you wait until they get up here to clap? It's like, dude, fuck you. No. The yeah. moment you say the name, we're going to freak out. Like, yeah, we want to do that. We yeah, let, we want to freak let out. Let each person get their moment. Yeah. It's not like it's a hundred awards. Not, I mean, the, the whole show took like 20 minutes. Like, yeah. Let it take 30 and let us clap for each person. Yeah. You know, I want to scream USA. You know? <laughs> I want to do these things. You're not letting me do it. It's, it's all very proper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, everything has its place in this <laughs> proper award ceremony. Yeah, he was like, "Can you wait when the Slayer Sword is announced until he raises his sword?" And it's just like, "Are you joking?" Yeah. And so he announces it, and we all freak out, anyways, and scream. Yeah, and like, "Oh, should we be quiet?" And then we all had to be quiet again. But it was like a half. It was like half the people in the in the audience were rules followers, and half were just like, "Fuck you, Americans!" <laughs> and we're just like, "Whoa!" Because <laughs> yeah. you still have this. You know, innate response. Yeah, of seeing that little fucking beautiful skink up there, <laughs> and then I, I got. I'm sure you probably did too, but got footage of Gavin raising the sword, and that the sound in that room was just deafening. <sighs> it was. It's so loud. Whenever I watch that clip, I fucking smile so much. I know because it's so quiet. It's so quiet, and then he puts it up, and we just all freak out. Yeah, and like it, like visually, because in mine I didn't use the audio for that because I'm talking, saying something really important yeah. that part of my video, but. Like it visibly shows the energy that just hits. Yeah. And like the like the look on his face is like like fear. I mean it was like fear. it was he was like 
fear and like the most happy a human can be at yeah. the same time yeah like i don't know if maybe he was like crying a little bit or something like that someone shouted out it's like it's okay to cry yeah. um and man yeah that was it was amazing it was amazing so i guess we kind of transitioned from our favorite parts <laughs> into the actual golden demon because we we're talking about this, yeah yeah this parts of it was the golden demon um and it was so cool to talk to people you, know, you talk to people at the cases and you maybe you knew or maybe you didn't and you, you, they tell you that they had a piece let's go over and look at it and just like whoever it is you know talking about um the piece that they did i remember there was a, a nice gentleman from england that i found out later from listening to the cult of paint podcast this is his first golden demon he entered the mortarian the mortarian that placed he got a golden demon nice. in the large 40k and he, he's not been painting for, for too long, and he just kind of walked through all the things he was nervous about, all the things he was second-guessing, and, you know, whatever. And obviously, it was, like, you could tell that he, he poured a lot of effort into that, and it was it was a beautiful piece. So it's just memorable for me to look back at conversations we had in, like, conversations with Mamacon around the cases. Mamacon, yeah. Um, uh, with, with Andy, with, with all sorts of people, like um, even Matt, the guy that runs a Golden Demon Compendium, about, you know, his piece, and he's all very, you know, uh, shy and, and proper British about his, his piece, his squad, I think it was, for 40K, mm-hmm. and, you know, just kind of downplaying it, and then seeing results and just kind of like, oh, looking back at that conversation, it was, it was really cool for me to to go through that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was an interesting award ceremony for me. And I don't want to try to make something out of nothing and try to sound profound, you know, Scott style, but I feel like I had a profound experience and I want to share it because it was super interesting to be with you and Vince and Sam, people who had real skin in the game. You know, Mm -hmm. I didn't really have real skin in the game. And what that allowed me to do was when someone won, I could be truly happy for that person. Mm -hmm. Because I know me, I'm a jealous person, right? Mm. If I was in a category and I didn't fucking win, that emotion of not winning would have overshadowed everything, mm-hmm. right? And so because I didn't have any real prospects, I had no real expectation. So when Skink won Slayer Sword or when someone won something else, I, I, I could go over to that person and be truly happy and ecstatic for that person. And my hope is that as I can bottle up that 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 feeling that feeling of being happy for someone in the midst of, of not succeeding myself and remember it when i do try yeah. and do fail because it's going to happen right it's going to yeah. happen uh, repeatedly then that was interesting while also having friends who had things in the competition who didn't win things and kind of knowing how they're feeling right now mm. i saw vince immediately after and you know also shout out to tom lyons dude they're <laughs> hanging out over in the painting area yeah. and he comes up and asked about Vince, and he's just, he was just concerned about his well-being and the way he was feeling. And I was like, "That's a true fucking friend." Yeah. And I was like, "Fuck yeah, Tom, that was amazing." Um. So yeah, I I tried talking to Vince and trying to like you know kind of l- lament with him, but also celebrate with those who won. And it was this very interesting like situation to be in, like yourself as well. Yeah. Like, how are you feeling? Yeah. Um. Two things. I remember there's this weird little moment of time right after an award ceremony is over and you all shuffle out. And I remember mm-hmm. this really distinctly from Crystal Brush too. Mm-hmm. And there's just like this weird energy. And you can like, you, I've never experienced it any other portion of my life where people have poured so much into something. And in a moment, it feels like it's all gone. Yeah. And that feeling of failure and that feeling of just shock and disbelief and anger. And these are all human emotions. And yeah. these are, there's, there's nothing to be ashamed of in those. And I felt that again there. And I hadn't felt it for three years. Yeah. And um, especially, you know, from, from others. When my category was first, and they went through third, second, first, and then mine wasn't uh, picked, I was, I was like, ah, shut down. Yeah. I the shut down. first thing. Yeah. I didn't, I feel like I didn't really get to fully experience the awards because I, I was I, immediately felt like crap. That's what I was saying. Yeah. I didn't have that crap feeling and I was yeah. just, I was so happy for so many people and yeah. it felt so fucking good. Yeah. And I was like, if, if I, I'd done the same fucking thing if I was in yeah. your situation. Yeah. So I felt 
frustrated. I was like, oh, fucking three space marines. Three fucking space marines beat me. Yeah. Goddamn space marines. And yeah. I was like, okay. All right, look at those three pieces. Look at the three artists. Look at how amazing they're painted. And in the moment, it's okay to just say fuck all. But <laughs> in, in hindsight, like I'm not, I'm not salty at all. And if anything, I'm like, I could have done better. I should have done better. You know, all these kinds of things. But in that moment, I was just, I was not cool. Luckily... I got to sit next to my two new friends and my best friend from the, the whole convention, which was Macaroni. So Macaroni sat right next it. to me. So I was like, I was just feeling it. And that fucking dog put his head on my knee. Like he knew. Seriously? Yeah, he knew. Did you get footage of this? Yes. Fuck yeah, dude. And he knew that something was off. And so I was like, I was petting him. I kind of just like zoned out yeah. in the next category and a half. And then I heard... Sam Lenz's name called. And I yeah. was like, fuck this, John. Like, fuck this. Like, this is awesome. Yeah. Sam won. Yeah. And at that point, I'm like, I wasn't to where you were at. Yeah. But I just like, I need to put it aside and I need to really be happy because I know these people, like, they're my friends and I really, really want to be there and want to see them smile and take the take the trophy and all that hard work is paid off. Yeah. And so by the end, it kind of like, I just put it to the back of my brain and then when gavin won the slayer sword i was like all right this is fucking awesome yeah you know so yeah it's tough i mean it, it's, it, it's yeah dude it, and it what the thing is that i i don't want to get deep into this but what i want to make sure that we don't uh, avoid is all the drama that went on oh well, yeah i want to talk about that absolutely and i'm really frustrated by that yeah and I'm not frustrated that people have opinions. I'm not frustrated that um, there's there's kind of drama on who won and who didn't. Um, but if you were there and you saw and you experienced and you realized how so many people were so worthy there and that it's splitting hairs and that that doesn't mean that one person is garbage and the other person should be put on such a high pedestal but it's just if you were to see the human side of it and be at the event i guarantee you wouldn't if you had any sense of humanity you wouldn't go out there and shit on people a hundred percent to meet gavin to see his piece in the case to see how he reacted to winning the slayer sword he was the he was the worthiest person there it was like king arthur pulling a sword out of the goddamn stone yeah. it was like it was the biggest feel good moment ever. And then to didn't go on the internet and see fucking people and their pedantry say he didn't deserve it. Honestly, if you're listening to this episode, shame on you. And you did that because it was, it was a beautiful moment and that kind of soured it a little bit. Cause I, I talked to him after the fact and he was like, yeah, I'm kind of just staying off the internet for a little bit. And I was like, that's a sad, but good idea. Cause yeah. like, honestly, it was, it was, it was frustrating. It should, he should have nothing but positive feelings about the Absolutely. experience. Absolutely. Yeah. And it sucks that people are just trying to ruin that or soil it for him, soil yeah. his memory. And that's part of it. That, yeah. that stain, that ugly jealousy should be stuck to what should be a pure moment for him. Yeah. Um, and it's not just him. He's not the only one no, that had yeah. to deal with some shit. In fact, yeah. he probably isn't the biggest one that had to deal with some shit. Yeah, dude. Blood is medium. John Margiotti got a lot of shit for his, uh, his dreadnought. And that was super fucking sad to see, too. Yeah. It's like it, it, people act like, John purposely painted it a way that was bad, and he he knew all along he was trying to be the villain, and he was doing something. What the a fuck? One. People are saying that? Like that's that's how it's no no no. That's not what they're okay, saying. Okay, that's what is in being implied. Okay, they're putting this person down for what? If you look at his body of work, he has a very distinct, gritty, grim, dark style, yeah. and he paints that way, and he's unabashedly who he is. And his personality, and how he paints, how he enjoys his art, and he's filled with so much energy and oh so God. much excitement for what for the whole experience. And yeah. he's so prideful about doing something his own way. And so to say to somebody, "You're doing something your own way, but I don't like it." Yeah, and I and think it's, it's that, worse than yes, yeah. And it's art, right? It's it's open to interpretation. And if the judges saw that piece as a perfect or a grand example of a style that screams death guard. Yeah. You can agree or you can disagree, but you don't have the right to just shit all over somebody 
when you didn't go through there and you didn't pick them up, you didn't look at them six inches from your face in the case, and you didn't really know. Now, as we all know, what a miniature looks like in real life and what a miniature looks like in, in photos can be vastly different. Yeah. And I'm not saying that anyone's mini would look better than their photos or look worse than their photos. I'm just saying that to take a photo and to get have your rage level go to 11 and take it out on others shows that there's something internally with you that maybe you should should check out instead of just trying to to spread drama and hate over what was I could tell you between winners losers everyone that experienced there was a positive experience super positive and I don't want I don't want to that there have to be Darren Lathams of the world and the Matt who runs the Golden Demon Compendium have to make a public statement about this and they did because it was that bad for a period of time and hopefully it all goes down we can all remember the positivity of it but the last thing i want is to people to sully this awesome miniature painting competition and and ruin it and make it so people don't want to compete or make it so yeah G dude. gw doesn't want to have it or make it so that it's like is it worth all the shit that they have to go through. Yeah. Don't, let's not make it that. Yeah. One thing about American crowd, which is not necessarily the U.S. crowd, is that we are very loud and very boisterous. Mm -hmm. And with that, you know, that big personality comes big opinions too, right? Right. And so, yeah, we, we there's a chance we could fuck it up for ourselves for sure. Um, and yeah, I, I know we're kind of like being a little bit like yelling at our own audience, but we know our own audience isn't doing these terrible things. Um, we're just saying like, if you see it out in the wild, you know, we want you to spread the positivity of the, of the hobby, that the good feels that we had in the Golden Demon Ceremony Hall, we want that for everyone. We want everyone to experience that. And it starts by not shitting on people for their like painting style. Yeah. Like, I love John Margiotti is like, like the kind of guy you're scared of first, right? <laughs> His profile picture is a literal knuckle sandwich. <laughs> it's a fist between two pieces of bread. And he, he's like a scary, stocky looking dude. But he is the loveliest person ever. And whenever he talks with me, he talks about you too. And he's like, you guys are awesome. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. And it's like, dang, man, I, I love that when that happens. When a scary dude is, like the, <laughs> is, is the nicest fucking person ever. Um, he's super nice. And again, if, if you met him and you talked to him, you would never say the shit that people were saying about him on the internet because he's just a, a wholesome individual. Yeah. Yep. Um, is, that so enough, yeah, is that enough I, Uncle John, Uncle Scott? I think I think so. I think one of the things that I really was trying to do in, in the video that came out today for me was to try to get people thinking about competing, thinking about attending a convention, thinking about you know taking action. And the the powerful experience and memories that you can make of going through something and because going through a miniature painting competition is no easy task because no. you really have to commit yourself to the the hours to the blood sweat and tears to the ass phase to the to the working and work, reworking and reworking on a model to where you're not always happy right because it's, it's it's hard work anything that's hard work is not fun all the time and but when you do it and you see it in the case and whether you got a finalist pin or you didn't, or whether you got a commended or you didn't, whether you got a golden demon or you didn't, um, I think it really is an experience that I want more people to have. And to me, that's the thing that bugs me the most about drama about it is that I don't want anyone to not experience this because they see the negativity around it. And so let's, let's quit talking about it. Yeah. And if you see it out there, okay, I say keep talking about it and I keep talking. If you see it out there and you see people posting shit or whatever, the last thing you should do is comment on their fucking post because yeah. then it has 500, 500 comments on it. And then it's got pushed to the top of everybody's feed because it's got the most interactions. And then all you're doing is you're taking your shovel and you're filling coal into the fucking furnace that is the demon that we are trying to slay. So just ignore them. And find the positivity posts. If you're going to talk about something or you're going to come on and comment on something, talk about those. Comment on those. Yeah. The Meth of Cooking Art, you know that guy on Instagram? Yeah. He, he, he said, this is why I'll never compete. And he pointed to that situation. And I was yeah. like, God fucking damn it. Yeah. It's the, it's a, that's the exact opposite of what you want to happen. He's a great painter. Yeah, I know. He's a great painter, too. Yeah. That sucks. It does. All right. Let's get positive. Let's get positive. Let's talk game demos. Game demos. I was a fucking god. Uh, I'm 3 and 0 in game demos at Adepticon. Okay. So maybe I'm not chicken winner, man. <laughs> but I'm, I'm game winner. I'm game winner, you man. You should have entered a fucking tournament. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm fucking 3 and 0. Let's let this money ride. Dude. Okay. Talking about tournaments. 
the the guy who won the a Song of Ice and Fire tournament, his name is Brett. Um, him and I have been chatting a bit on Discord, and uh, the p- person who won the a Song of Ice and Fire competition got Euron's axe in a one to one scale, like a real metal axe. Oh. Um, and he won, and he got it, but he gave it to Mark Rupp, who is a local Twin City player who won in 2019 the a song of ice and fire competition because mark won or got second place with a, a suboptimal all neutral list and that was also another amazing feel-good moment yeah. he was like i won but you deserve this more than i do because you you basically went toe-to-toe with me with like you know a more of a meta list and it came down to dice rolls yeah. and like you deserve this axe and i was just like fuck yeah that's awesome so oh. mark's got it Local Minnesota pride. Love that shit. I love, I love the scrappy crappy, right? <laughs> scrappy crappy. Yeah, that's what you call that. He's like, look, I know you got all your fancy hot, hottest rule set mutton units out there and you pack them in there and you do your shenanigans, but I'm scrappy and I'm crappy. <laughs> I want to fucking irk this out. I'm going to make you earn every inch of it. Yeah. I'm going to make you like die on this hill that you don't want to die on because I'm going to just grind you out. And that's yeah. really fucking cool. I see that in Age of Sigmar too. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Get him. Yes. Yeah. All right, game demo number one, a relic blade. Yeah, Malev, he had his plan. What, what was the mechanic of that game that you liked? Um, well, it was alternating activation. Mm-hmm. It was at a size map that felt like a, a, a proper skirmish game. Yeah, it was smaller, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and it took a while. I, re- I realized I made some pretty hearty mistakes in yeah. turn one movement. You walked right into me. <laughs> I should have known that a gnome with a fucking sniper rifle could just sh- shoot all my dudes across the table. Um <laughs> I I really liked uh, the way that the customization with gear, spells, and abilities worked in that game. It really okay. felt like how you built your fantasy, very kind of like traditional Lord of the Rings style. Like it felt very nostalgic, kind of a oh, gameplay. Like you're making a war band Lord of the Rings style, kind of like yeah, or even okay. like classic Dungeons and Dragons style. Okay, it, okay. it just it just felt very like true true and like just like holistic to how those kinds of games would play and there was mm. enough strategy in it but it was it was very simplistic to learn the game like i felt right away it felt cool mm. um picking different types of attacks the way that hits and crits worked felt natural felt cool felt quick felt good when it happened yes that kind of stuff yeah that was my favorite mechanic of the game is like so you had like a set amount of dice that represented how many actions you could do in a turn. Mm-hmm. And some actions required one die, some required two die. And say like my gnome had like a, a two die action, which was like shooting her sniper rifle. And on my little card, it would say a two die and a three sided die. So it was a two die action and I needed a two and a three, uh, which all that meant was I needed with two dice, I needed to get a five or a higher combined score for it to be successful. But the crit happened when I rolled specifically a two and or a three. three. So now you could do this thing in the game where you could like focus on doing an action, which would yeah. add a die to your roll. But then that made it more complicated to get a crit. And I really love that interaction in game, this pushing and pulling, where it's right. like I can I can boost something, I can use this resource, but then I kind of miss out in a different way. And so that that dice system had that going on, and I love that about it. Yeah, it every so the like the different bonus things and the different decision points in the game were never felt like they were strictly this is just better Mm -hmm. everything had a little bit of a like you said a push and a pull to it and it was like is this the right time to do this is this the right action to do it on if i save it for later am i going to have a better time and opportunity is there a different character that's more in tune to do this on and that kind of thing and as i was playing the game the thing that really excited me was that I felt like I was learning how my characters played and I felt like, oh, I want to play again because mm-hmm. now I know what this one does well. Mm-hmm. And I know that my berserker pig should be with another dude because he has this, this aura buff that like buffs the other dudes around him, which was super strong. And I fucking ran him out on his own like an <laughs> idiot because I, I didn't like really read the rules before because we're learning as we're playing. Yeah, that's kind of demos work. You kind of just fucking throw caution to the wind. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I think is kind of would be easily missed but what the game does so elegantly is the amount of dice rolls in that game oh yeah it doesn't feel like you're rolling dice and then rolling dice and then rolling dice no yeah and it doesn't feel like you never roll dice it's right in the middle every time you roll a dice it matters and you don't roll them all the time there's so many aspects of the game that didn't involve rolling dice that were important to the strategy of the game so it felt like there was a certain amount 
that luck wasn't involved in that you could kind of mitigate because okay. you weren't having to just keep rolling and keep rolling. So. Okay. Speaking of luck and luck mitigation, let's talk about Rivenstone. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Rivenstone is one of those games, a uh, sponsor of this video. Um, <laughs> I, it's, it's to me, it's so different than any kind of game I've played before. Now, granted, I haven't played a hundred different kinds of yeah. games before. There's a lot of games out there that I haven't played. Yeah. Either. That to me, it felt it was familiar enough that I thought, I know what I was getting into, mm -hmm. and I did not know what I was getting into. <laughs> I was doing stuff so suboptimally, and I didn't realize that shit respawned until like it literally respawned, and I'm sitting there pissed off at the game because all my dudes were fucking dead. And he's like, okay, and now these guys get to come back. I'm like, what? Yeah, wave spawn in a miniature war game. You guys know of any uh, war games that use that in the base rule set? So not in like a scenario, but like in the normal rule set for the game where models die, like heroes and minions, and they come yeah. back? Yeah. I've never I've never seen that before. I just assume it was in most games it's the undead thing, right? Yeah. You re-raise the things that have died in yeah. here. And it's a part of the strategy. It's like some like the guys that were teaching us didn't seem concerned at all. My big giant model hero dude just got his shit kicked in. Yeah, he got dive bombed and then he, he I, killed. I just got crushed. After I had set up this fucking like tower of defenses and the guy that was teaching us, he's like, wow, that's probably the most defensive you could possibly have set this guy up. And I'm like, fuck yeah, man. I got fuck. strats for days. And then Scott goes, meow. <laughs> yeah, my orc guy just comes in and his little dragon guy is just like, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, everybody just fucking died, dude. This fucking orc on a battle cat just destroyed me. Yeah. And I was like, well, and he's like, no, don't worry. Because now he's all out of position. You got stuff, blah, blah, blah. And your guy's coming back. I'm like, my guy's coming back? <laughs> my guy's coming back? Yeah. No one told me this shit. Yeah. I should affect my decision. So it was one of those games where I truly felt you need to play a whole game and not worry at all about the result. Yeah. Because playing through it, I was like, oh, I'm absorbing. Yeah. And I'm seeing, like, I'm fucking looking into the matrix. Yeah. Now I see how different things work based mm -hmm. on how the rule set goes. So. Yes. Yes. Um, I also liked how when you rolled for damage, you rolled this, was it a D10 or a D8? It was a red little die. Oh, D, D10, I think. D10. D10. So whenever you did damage with a, with a D6 die, you rolled a D10 die with it, and then you would apply your damage based on your successes, and then you would also apply this secondary effect, which was often a push or some other effect. Crit. Or crit, yeah, that happened based on this other die roll. I thought that was kind of a cool mechanic. Yeah, it's a way to add some interesting stuff to it without like bloating your rule system. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. it's like an extra die, you just roll. There's no fucking chart to consult right. or like thing to compare. That was awesome. Also, side note, I fucking love talking to the guys who wrote Rivenstone about game design because they were incredibly passionate about uh about how to write rule sets and that's kind of something that we're looking into at the moment mm -hmm. and they had a lot of insight and they were super willing to share so that was that was a lot of fun chatting with them yeah it's love it's 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 love it's love it's love that's what it is um it was i i really like about that game which kind of got my wrap my brain around like i feel like i understand the game like 40 percent. like after playing one game of relic blade i felt like i understood the game 80 yeah, percent. yeah yeah you're playing one game of urban Stone, i felt like i i understood it 40 percent. and that's not a negative no it isn't yeah. it just means that like i real like there's a lot of moving pieces here in this game that i think is really interesting i just can't fully grasp them yet and it wasn't hard to learn which is kind of weird because it felt like we hit the ground running we just didn't understand the decisions at the moment how they affected a lot of things at a larger scale. Yeah. There really, were a lot of mechanics, right? But they weren't like super deep mechanics necessarily, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and it's weird because your warmand can be made up of, you have two heroes and then I think you have like three or four units, four units of minions. Yeah. But your heroes can be from any faction in the game. Mm -hmm. So like ours were each two from the same faction, but like I could have had my big, huge priest dude and your orc on battle cat dude mm -hmm. on my army. And then the minions that you get to choose from to fill your ranks with are based on which factions your two heroes are from. Mm. And so to me, that's like, oh man, now we're getting into fun list building, combo building, who mm -hmm. works well with what, and mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Because I originally thought it was weird when I was like, oh, is this on like a point system or whatever? Because I had this one big giant hero, and my other hero was just kind of like a normal-sized knight, not much bigger than the minions. And his health was way lower. He was fairly tanky and defensive. But like some of his abilities were like, they were like proper win-the-game abilities. Like if he sat on a, a, a point, he got like two extra 
ribbon uh, stones, ribbon stone or two extra points uh, for winning the game. Mm. So it's like, man, this guy could just if oh yeah, if you could keep him protected or if you can keep him on a point, like he can win the game for you. But it's not broken because he's not just like oh he's got forty health, so it's so hard to kill him. Like it was really interesting. So yeah, each hero had their own way to accumulate victory points for the game, mm-hmm. and based on the characteristics of the character, that it would like be mirrored in how they got VPs. So my orc. Um, the one who wasn't mounted got VPs when he charged and killed or did damage in combat. And yeah. your guy got points when he was playing defensively on a point. And that, that was another cool thing. I kind of yeah. like that a lot. And my, my priest dude, I guess his big thing was I could steal your Riven Stone. Yeah. And Riven Stones in this game aren't actually like the points you use to win the game. They're a resource. Yeah, you so can see the attack. Yeah, you got to collect the resource and then you can use them for different abilities or you can use them for an extra attack. So me being able to steal yours was a good thing. Unfortunately, in the map that we were playing, there was so many ribbon stones to harvest that like we both just were flush with it. Yeah. And so I, I didn't feel like, oh, he was as useful there as he could have been, or I wasn't doing a good job of stealing and then crushing you with all those extra attacks. I like I didn't realize that that was a thing until I was getting eaten alive by fucking battle cats. <laughs> Thundercat. Ho! Oh! oh! All right. And then I played uh you played Kids on Bikes. Yes. With a bunch of YouTubers. Yes. And you were doing that for like 17 hours. It was a long game. Yeah. And then I was doing like 30 other things. But one of those yes. things I did was I played uh, Vince's game and Uncle Adam's game. Rain, Rain in hell. hell. Finally. I got to play it. I played a person that I had met earlier in the convention. I can't remember her name. But I also fucking won that one. Boom. Did you now? Feeling good. It's a fun game. It is a fun game. I got to use Uncle Adam's demons. And then uh, the other war band was Vince's demons. And I was fucking harvesting fucking things off a train, fucking, fucking killing people. Harvesting organs and eating eyeballs. And it felt great. Yeah, I that, game is, that game is fun. It's a fun, like, pick up and just smash. Yes. Yeah, there is. An, and I like how that game um, really works on how the each different scenario feels different and feels fun in its own way. So it's not just like you keep playing the game over and over, the same game with a different map. Okay. But it's still... Like the core things of how you build your your demon warband, um, still you have to like reevaluate how you're going to go about winning this. So it's like the fun strategy of the maps themselves. Yeah, really work well in that how that game was designed. Yeah, I like the priority in that game. How you determined which player went first. Each player had a D twenty. Just D twelves. D twelves per character in your warband, and you would roll it, and you would start with whatever player had the highest roll. Um, so it's say, basically an initiative system. It is, yeah. But it was cool because it, it was self-balancing. And what I mean by that was like, say if my opponent rolled three 12s and then like five ones or whatever, they would get to activate three characters before me if I had no 12s. But then it would get back to me and I would have the ability to activate characters in, in that middle zone and then they would get the ones at the end. So it was like the dice rolls self-balance because maybe you get a lot in the beginning but as you know, in objective-based games, having activations at the end are, is very valuable for right. collecting points, doing things. But having the last say in a round is important. Yeah. And so it kind of auto-balanced itself, just the way it was designed, which that is very smart design. And I really like that idea. Yeah. yeah the more information you have access to, the better decision-making you can make. Yeah. So that's it. If everyone's gone. But the, it, it, yeah, you're right. It, it fully balances because... If I'm going all at the end, that means you're going all first, and you could probably like take out a bunch of my. Yeah, dudes. you might kill a guy. Yeah, and that and was so, that. That's a good advantage too. Yeah, very cool, very cool game. Yes, I'm glad that you got to play that. I play. I did a bunch of play testing on that game before it came out. And so yeah. If you like it, it's because I was had a hand. In it. If you <laughs> is don't, your, is your name in the credits? It is. Yes. Oh God damn it! And if you don't like it, blame Vince. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so those are all the game demos. Well, you want to talk about kids on bikes at all? Um. No, I mean, just really briefly, we we put together, a, people wanted to play a game of D&D um, at the convention, and this was months in advance, and in the list of people that decided to want to play with us through, like, a creator's Discord group of, of people that wanted to play, it got bigger and bigger, and I said, ah, has anyone played Kids on Bikes? Do you want to play that? It's like Stranger Things, the RPG. It's a perfect game for a one-shot. We tell a full story. We build out everything together, and... Uh, the problem with it is, is it's it's really really heavy lift on your game master, your dungeon master, because you can't. I can't plan a story. I can't plan what's going to happen because everything that goes on 
is built by the group while we sit there before we play. Mm. And so it ended up being pretty wild and up being a real crazy, like black mirror, creepy ass game. And that is not what I had planned on being fun and, and silly kind of Goonies style. Um, and it was like, all right, man, this is the way we're going. This is the way we're going. But it had, a, it was so much fun to just sit and hang out and just play a game with all these people that I, we know from the internet, most of them I hadn't really spent any time with in person before. Well, who was it? Who was it? You were the DM and who were your players? Okay. Sexy teeth. Joshy played. Um, so did Danny from my Annie, Amy, Danny 3d printing DM, Bill from Berserker works, uh, Eric from Eric's hobby, hobby workshop. Hobby workshop. Uh, Lila from Lila Mev, mm-hmm. uh, Raquel from Rack Art, Rack X Art, uh, and then Blake and Ed from Life mm-hmm. After the Cover Save. Yeah, it's eight players. That's a is, lot, and that's why the game took so long. Yeah, um, but I still think it was fun. Everyone was really active. Everyone was really engaged. Everyone was was all had their great ideas. They all got to do their fun things and everything. So I had a, I had a blast. I would like to um, make that a an annual thing. That we have one night. Which is because there's so much stuff going on, and we don't really get to another sit, sit down, down and, and, and all just hang out and be nerds together. Like a long amount of time too, right? right? Yeah, a couple hours is good. Yeah, because yeah. you're like, you're normally you're having a conversation for ten minutes, and then you're kind of on to the next thing, right? Or people come up to you, which is great, um, you know, it, and they're like, "Oh, hey, I like you, blah blah blah, whatever," and you have great conversations, but you don't just kind of like completely just kind of like do your thing, yeah, and not get interrupted. It was it was later at night. We were at a kind of a a quiet corner of the convention hall and a big mm-hmm. table. And it just felt good to just, just relax and just play a game and not worry about everything else that was going on. You actually found the perfect table. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was perfect a giant spot. circle and it, and it fit everyone. It and fit I was like, exactly everyone. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. And it was in the, it was a back corner and there wasn't anyone around us. So it was relatively quiet. Yeah. That was one reason I was worried about my voice. Cause I basically talked for four hours straight. Yeah. And even though it wasn't super loud there, it's in a giant convention, high ceiling room. So yeah. you have to project so everyone can hear you. So I was like, Oh man, I'm going to feel this one. But yeah. Yeah. Persevered. You did. And man, I walked over there with some peanut butter M&Ms. And the moment I walk over there, peanut butter M&Ms, Blake's like, yep, give those to me. I'm yeah. like, Blake, what the fuck, bro? These are my M&Ms. And then Eric was like, yep, give those to me. I'm like, what the fuck, guys? These are mine. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you get. You can bring snacks without sharing with the class. You yeah, know that's what I'm true. saying? That's true. Yeah. Okay, so. there, there's a story that happened while you were off being a fancy boy eating steak. And that was his travesty. I didn't get to eat any fucking steak at Epticon. Yeah, I had a fucking Brazilian steakhouse. God damn. Me, Uncle Adam, Sam Lenz. And Vinci V were taken out by Jason and Jen, mm-hmm. the owners of Monument Hobbies. Yes. They took us out to Brazilian Steakhouse. We were there for three hours. We, Sam and I never stopped. <laughs> we're like, listen, we're not going to eat for the rest of this convention after tonight. <laughs> and we were just sitting there like kings. And you had like our... Like a like a barbarian where you like hold your your utensils in your closed fist yes. clenched. Yes. And we just sat there. Yes. And we just ate and ate and ate. I got to pee, so you can tell everyone the story. Okay, I'll tell the that. story. So John was off doing that, and I was hanging out at the hotel restaurant, and I was there for a decent amount of time. But that's not really the point of the story. The point of the story was uh, we were kind of we were kind of wrapping up, going to leave, and I had brought up the idea of going to the hot tub um, to the people we were hanging out with, uh, Jake and Josh, and so they brought their swim trunks, and uh, Jake was fucking hyped to go into the hot tub and he kept bringing it up over and over and over again. And I was like, okay, fuck yeah, we got to do this. And so I think it was Thursday evening. So it's still kind of like earlier on in the convention. Uh, it didn't feel like we were going to burn a lot of like important time, like on Friday or Saturday or something like that. And so on Thursday, after we had kind of finished eating dinner, we decided to go to the hot tub and we did that. And that was super fun and nothing really amazing happened at the hot tub. Um, but we came back afterwards um, and I, I had to change my clothes like you know you're all wet so we went upstairs took our our, our swim trunks off and, and put on some new clothes and i had brought some taco bell <laughs> inspired short shorts that were white and purple and teal like you know those colors right and uh i was uh i was in my short shorts and we were coming back downstairs to hang out in the uh in fort wapple in that painting area where everyone hangs out by the classrooms and I had realized while in the elevator that I had forgotten my fucking stuff that I bought that day on Thursday at the restaurant. And so I was wearing these super flamboyant short shorts and I had to walk back into the restaurant full of people 
past creature caster and co cast who were having like a little greet greet and meet meet and greet outside of the restaurant in these goddamn short shorts and then i went got my stuff i found it i felt like an idiot and then i came back and i was hanging out in that painting area and then john comes through after his steak dinner and he was like we got to go to this GW thing. And I'm like, what fucking GW thing? And I was like, oh shit, there's a GW thing on Thursday night. And I'm wearing these goddamn short shorts. <laughs> and we roll up in this event, you know, after, there was some weird waiting thing that we had to deal with. But then we, we get into this event and it's this giant meet and greet of content creators and they're all like fucking sipping on cocktails and looking super fancy. There's people in like suits and shit. And here I am in some tattered ass tie-dye hoodie <laughs> and these Taco Bell fucking short shorts. <laughs> And I'm a little bit under the influence, and I'm like, fuck, man, where am I right now? And so I kind of found a dark corner to hang out with Sam Lenz in, and then it was fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was a little weird. They had, they had like a, a open bar. And, yeah. And a little, little... Oh, it was an open bar? Yeah, dude, it was an open bar, What the fuck am I doing, bro? Open bar, dude. Yeah. I'll have six schlitzes. Yeah, so that was funny. Um, you got any stories you want to talk about? Oh, man. I, I just like I totally forgot about that story. Yeah, dude. About waiting outside. So yeah. we were waiting outside. We like, went to the laser tag area first. Oh yeah. We're like, fuck. Where do we gotta go? <laughs> Let's go to the laser tag. <laughs> that was the nope, not idea. the laser tag. There's a, apparently the email that was sent to us said like the fifteenth floor and the whatever, whatever. Yeah, suite. it did. We were just being stupid. We get up there and there's a crowd waiting outside. A, a handful of different creators. Yeah. The mini war gamer. It was Sam. People. Uncle Adam was there. Mini war gamer guys. Yeah, they were uh, hanging out waiting. Yeah, there's a guy that was super drunk. Yeah. I can't remember. I don't know who that guy was, but he was really loud. And we're just like waiting. We're like, oh, they'll let us in, whatever. Finally, someone opens the door, and there's this whole group of people already in there. They're like, oh, 20 minutes. They've been in there drinking beers. Eric is already in there. Yeah, like, I was like, what the fuck, Eric? He's like, oh, yeah, man, we were sitting here drinking beers for like six hours, eh? <laughs> And and uh, and so yeah, they gave us a little PowerPoint presentation and yeah. and uh, got to to rub elbows. Uh, tried to rub elbows with the main uh, judge for Golden Demon. That didn't work. No, it didn't. Later on, um, I can't remember what day it was. It was Saturday. I saw him, and I I just had the money in my pocket, and I pulled out, and it was like a hundred dollar bill. And I'm like, hey, you know that grotesque up there? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's too late. I already judged everything. I'm like. It's not too late. <laughs> it's never too late for it's, dollars. It's never too late. Uh, I don't think he thought it was funny as I thought it was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it didn't work. So maybe I actually was placing. And then afterwards, he's like, this <laughs> oh, guy tried to bribe me. Oh, no, Fuck him. dude. It backfired. That's super sad. Yeah, there's so many stories that I can't even remember. Uh, Con John was there. Uh, he doesn't remember much. Yeah, Con John was, was deep into his cups. But uh, <laughs> Daryl was also there, but I never saw him. I don't know if any goody peepees. Did you ever see Daryl at the convention? He told me he was there anyway. We got back. And he was he was making fun of me because uh, I didn't win. But um, I might have saw him. He, I think he told me to meet him at the Army Painter booth, but I didn't. I never went over there. Oh yeah, yeah. He loves he loves Army Painters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big he's time. probably wearing camo. He probably had like a ghillie <laughs> suit on, and he's like <laughs> hiding in the bush. That's yeah. something he would. He do. was like, I identify with these people. Yeah. <laughs> Place for my people. <laughs> I had a weird moment where I asked the Rivenstone guys who wrote the rule set for the game. Were you there when this happened? Uh, yeah, but I was talking to Chris, and I heard an argument going on next to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Chris kind of Chris, who's the owner of Black Animal Miniatures, he kind of gave this sideway look, like these two fucking guys. He's like, not again. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. But yeah, two guys got in a bit of a little argument about who made the rule set for the game. And we had to like separate ourselves from their arguments so we could kind of continue having our own conversation. They rejoined, having made a decision about who made what percentage of the game, and then continued to argue. And so we had to leave again so they could continue to argue for a second time to figure out who actually wrote this game. But that was probably the biggest question I asked. That was like, this is the, the biggest regret I had at the I time. I immediately regret this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was funny. It was funny. Uh, okay, well, last thing that we want to talk about in this main topic is... The vendor hall, but more specifically, was there any either big memories about the the vendor hall or certain things that you bought that you were happy you bought? Anything you regret not buying? Um, any kind of standout things from the vendor hall? The so, shopping experience. Yes. So I have been a Scale 75 painter for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I have always had their silver metallics. But it wasn't until I was at the Golden Demon cases talking to matt about his 
Blood Angel piece where I was like, where, where, where did you get that that TMM, that dirty ass gold? Mm-hmm. And he's like, that's Necro Gold yes. from Scale 75. And I was like, fuck. I never bought the copper or the gold TMM set from them. And so I bought the gold set and I have this Necro Gold color that I can't wait to use. It's this dirty, dark looking gold color. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Yes. They also, the copper set. I was trying to talk you into buying the copper I set know, too. Because yeah. <laughs> there's one in there called Decayed Metal. I know. That looks fucking great too. I used that on my... Uh, Last week's video where I speed painted the the mini war gamer Dave's uh, Rabbit Star mini, and I was like, God, I remember how good I this this is. You I think bought I'm, it. Then we got it shared. I, I already own it. Yeah, damn, damn, I own I own all those paints. Why did I just buy the singles? Yeah, I don't know if you can buy singles of scale seventy five. You uh, on their website you can. Oh, but, but that, I mean, all their coppers and golds are are solid. Yeah, the only ones that they have that I like, I not a fan of, is they have like the colored metallics. They call it like Moonstone Alchemy and yeah. Emerald Wonder and shit Rose like that. Rose gold stuff. Yes, like yeah, so where it's like very obviously just a metal medium added to a paint. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use that Necro Gold on my Primark. I think. Nice. I think oh, I'm that's like, perfect. I think I need to do some TMM. I ain't got the heart in me to go NMM on that dude. So. <laughs> I think that's a good, a good, good reminder. Yeah. Um, so I, I bought a bunch of things, but the thing that I was most excited for was actually from the Games Workshop booth, which is stupid because <laughs> everything there, all, what I thought assumed would be everything there is just Games Workshop models and shit, like in paint and shit that yeah, you can get yeah. anywhere. But they had the limited run art. Yes. And they had one left of the Soul of Light Grave Lords box art. Oh, man. If, if you don't know something about John, something to know about John, this man cannot stop himself when there is a limited edition, low quantity stuff. He's yeah. like, yep, give it to me. Yeah. Only 250 of these ever made with a certificate of authenticity. Oh, there's one left? Yep. Mine. Mine. <laughs> I I meant to go back and like do a more thorough search to see if there's anything else because like as soon as I found that I'm like <laughs> yeah. I just like run over there take my money and then I'm while I'm standing in line to <laughs> further compound your your point on me he's like we got one of these left and it was like a, a, a con exclusive or whatever limited run model he's like we got one left who wants it I'm in line and I'm like yep yep yeah give it to me I was considering it and then someone behind me picked it up and I was like okay whatever turns out it was fucking John <laughs> doing it and it was the slaves to darkness Helga something something where she's like half human half demon yeah. with a badass pose it's a sick model and that one's really hard to get I guess because nice. that one was released in the the year of our lord covid death series <laughs> so there was no events going on yeah so you couldn't really get it so okay. i was like oh sweet i guess I'm, I'm buying this i don't i don't really want it but I, i'll have it now now i'm now i'm glad i have it so. yeah yeah it was a cool model for sure you bought a, a awesome model though too didn't you uh from the gw booth no from the was it awakened realms uh anything? no it wasn't awakened realms it was journeyman miniatures journeyman miniatures um yes it is a a Viking queen sitting on a throne looking very fucking badass. Um, I have been aware of this model for a long time, but having it just easily available to me at the mm-hmm. con, I was like, fuck yep, yeah, I'm buying that. Because I saw Vince bought it, and I was like, yes, where is that? I'm going to find it. Talk to the guys there. They were super cool. They actually shared our uh, our podcast episode oh. uh, at, uh, at Adepticon. Really? Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, I love that model. The model's amazing. Yeah. They had uh, another one that they were showing off, but it was only up for pre-order, and that was the female samurai. Oh. That is a bit of me right there. Okay, yeah. That model yeah, is bye. all me. Yeah, just a badass, right amount of detail, amazing looking samurai warrior, and she's not sexualized. Oh. How much is that a breath of fucking fresh air yes. in our hobby yeah. where there's not like titties hanging out no titties. Like, in a seductive pose or like that's not what someone would actually wear to battle with your you know bi- you know chainmail bikini which it all has its place we all love frank frazetta right yeah but also yeah. like she's an actual warrior like she's actually gonna go lop off some revolutionary people's heads next to tom cruise yeah right? there <laughs> nice <laughs> there are some fucking sick and just evil looking female characters out there that like aren't sexual at all and i think we need to see those ones too i fucking love those characters they're just they're just so mean looking i know we need some more brienne of tarths in our lives Mm, yes uh i bought a bunch of other stuff but i think i like i said like i once again i feel like i really meant to just dig into every booth and i still feel like i i didn't as much as i should have um, the big thing, my biggest regret in terms of buying mm. was not spending any time at the bits booth. I didn't go there at all. Yeah. And I was 
seriously felt like a, a feeling of missing out that the first night that after we went in some jackass shenanigans with Goobs, Casey, and Eric oh and Bill. Oh my God, yeah, they went and did that. They went, after we went to bed at like 3, 3.30, they went to the Bits Barn and they hung out there for like another there? hour. Yeah, it's open 24 hours. What the fuck? Yeah, dude, that's the time to go. Wednesday night, that's the fucking time, bro. Wednesday night, we should like make set up, put it on our let's, calendar. Let's make an event. Like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., Wednesday night. That's our bits thing because Eric bought like two Warlord Titans or Warhound yeah, Titans. dude, yeah, you know, like a thousand dollars at three in the morning. Yeah, dude, mistakes were made, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that'll that'll be an event, dude. The one a.m. fucking bits barn, fucking buying charade. Yeah, I would love to do yeah. that. Oh yeah. Oh man, there's a fucking video idea there where like everyone gets fifteen minutes <laughs> and twenty bucks and twenty bucks, and you gotta buy something, and then you gotta who gets the coolest and shit? Then you gotta paint it. Oh, while you're fun. drunk or something. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I like this idea. I think it's, it sounds like a great idea. Although I wish it was happening next week. I found uh, this is my first year at Adepticon of like having a camera and feeling like I should. Oh, do yeah. Something. How, how'd that go? Like I kind of I feel like I, I pulled it out of my ass with the video that I made out of it. But I had no direction of what I want, what video I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. And kind of going with how I make most of my videos is I have a seed and then I let it ride, and then the story makes itself throughout the video. Yeah. I kind of wanted that to work this way, but either the times that that meant I didn't have my camera on me, or I felt like I needed more direction. I needed more like, okay, here's my seed. I need to keep my eyes out for the things that will fit that. Mm -hmm. So I just had a bunch of random ass footage. Um, and so I learned my lesson a little bit. I also didn't want to like overthink it and like worry about Cause it's like, if I don't make an Adepticon video, that's fine. Like I want to enjoy this. I don't want to like stress about it and then not actually just enjoy why I'm there. Cause that's the reason I'm really there. Yeah. That, that is, that is the hardest part. You could, you could go full Casey Neistat at this event and just have your camera on you at all times. And you would capture some hilarious shit, but it'd be like way less fun. Right. Um, so there's a fine line you have to tread. And I feel like I was trying to be more of like a have, have the camera on me at all times kind of guy this time. And I, and I got a lot of fun footage um, that will be in a video, which will be out by the time this is out. I hope. I hope. Uh, I hope. Uh, but yeah, it, it did, it did make it suck a little bit more. Um, I just thought of a story. Okay. We, we were, uh, me and Vince and Ben were fucking nose deep an inch away from the golden demon cabinets talking about pieces. And we were kind of shitting on golden demon a little bit Uh oh. and this, but you know, just kind of comparing it to crystal brush. Oh, I remember this story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this fucking guy <clears throat> like behind us, there wasn't a whole lot of space between the railing and the case. Mm -hmm. What? Well, you think like four feet four and a half feet yeah and uh this guy was like you think crystal brush is any different like he, and like we're like fucking whispering yeah <laughs> and like we're like an inch away from the glass and he's like i don't know like a foot behind or something like that and like both vince and ben just turn around and look at this guy and then turn back and continue doing what they're doing and i was like <laughs> okay i guess it falls to me to deal with this fucking psychopath who's just shouting at me right now when he started shouting i was a good 25 30 feet away <laughs> you're like somewhere i was else. over there with sam on like the other corner yeah i heard him <laughs> and i look around and i'm like shit's about to go down Sam. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was irate yeah he was for mad. no reason he was mad well i think he was mad that we were kind of crapping on golden demon compared to uh crystal brush a little bit and so then i kind of sat him down and we had a little bit of just chat and then we kind of came to some terms but i heard a funny story about that same guy later on where he set up a table right where uh, i told you that story did you tell me this funny tell me this story okay what the fuck was he doing okay so as we leave the convention hall the the uh, vendor area there's tables set out smaller tables for more stuff to buy yeah it was the last day it was sunday in the morning joshy and i went and did one more quick loop and we come out and there's just like a, a folding table set up and there's a guy with a whole bunch of like different warhammer kits and stuff in bags and whatever and he's this guy is like like yelling people over like somebody on the street trying to sell you <laughs> fake nikes and shit and 
And so like I like walk over there and I'm looking at stuff and he's trying to hard sell me on stuff. Yeah. And he had this whole spiel. He was like, bam, 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 knocking it out. I was like, my wife's making me sell all my stuff. I I got all these extra things. I'm just giving away uh ten percent less than eBay. I checked everything prices, blah, 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 blah. And it was still it was like for this thing of old space marines, it was like fifty five dollars. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> And then I look at him and I'm like, this guy looks familiar. Where the <laughs> fuck do I know this guy from? And then it dawned on me. I'm like, this is the fucking guy that lost his shit to, to Scott at the Golden Demon cases the other night. Same dude. Yeah. And then just, so what I did was, because I'm like, I kind of like felt angry at that point. Like this guy was a dick. <laughs> and so I took a bunch of stuff and I was like, kind of put it in a pile in front of me. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, whatever. And he's like, oh, I think I got extra bases for these. And I had this pile or whatever. It was just still in, it was, I wasn't like making a mess of anything. I kind of put it all over here and whatever. And then he's like, oh, and I'm like, can you, uh, you cut me a deal on all this? I had no intention of buying it. I, can you cut me a deal on all this? And he's like, yeah, what are you looking for? I'm like 20 bucks. And he's like 20 bucks for each of them. And they were all priced 40, 50, 60 bucks a thing. It was like six things. No, 20 bucks for all of oh it. Oh my God. You actually did this? Yes. That's Josh. He's like, no. And I'm like, okay then. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, fuck you. You walk in and, and just waste somebody else's time. And just put a table down? with it. Well, I mean, just like the irate. I, I was going back to the irate argument. But also he was, a, he was like a proper dick to like yelling at people. Yeah. And like pushing. Like he was pushing hard. He was like a, a used car salesman. And I was just like, no, man, we're here to have fun. They're not here for you to like pull open a table and try to hawk your shit. Also, you got to pay for those that space. Yes. When you sell stuff at Adepticon. Yes, you do. A so, vendor license is not a cheap thing. No, like these the people directly across from him that have been there for three or four days spent probably thousands of dollars for yeah. the, this guy to just cross the way to just show up and get shit for free. And Maybe he paid. We don't actually know, but. I, we get the vibe that he probably didn't. I, I got I got an idea of like he knows somebody that works there, kind of thing. They let him do it. Kind of oh, thing. Okay. That, that doesn't that doesn't change doesn't the fact. That okay. doesn't change the fact for the people straight across from you that have been working their ass off for like sixteen hour days for the last four days. Yeah, and had to pay a, a lot of money. It's like anyway. So yeah. that guy uh, he doesn't know it. We have a podcast, so screw yeah. him. There was a, a to corroborate your story. Someone else told me that in the time that it took him to walk past that guy's table he heard the story about how his wife wants him to get rid of his models like three times yeah. so he was he was talking quite rapidly yeah. and loud like yes. super loud he's yelling at people that were just leaving the vendor hall yeah to come over that guy was wild yeah okay uh that made uh, i had a different story now that reminded me of and, I'm, and i forgot it so oh okay uh well the video i wanted to make so I actually had a video that I wanted to make and I had all set up to do it. And I, um, I was going to steal the gold, the Slayer sword. Oh God. Yes. So that would have been so good. It, um, and I almost regret even telling the story because I want to do it in the future. But if I do it in the future, I don't think it will be all that much lost. So in, uh, at the display case areas, it's kind of set up like a giant horseshoe. And in the open side of the horseshoe around all the display cases, there was a table set up where you go and turn in your pieces and stuff. And then behind that in the whole empty area in the inside of the horseshoe, they had tables. That's where they were taking pictures. That's where they were looking at models, probably judging. And that's where they had all the golden demons lined up as well as the slayer sword just sitting there. So I thought I want to make a video where I steal it and not like I'm actually going to steal it because I talked to a certain games workshop employee about this idea and he thought it'd be hilarious but uh i should never said that i got approval for it um because i didn't get approval from games workshop and it's going to be a whole spoof video i steal the slayer sword but overnight once they kind of closed down the actually having staff there they had a security guard same security guard every night he had domino's pizza every night he had domino's <laughs> pizza he's sitting and watching movies and shit on his phone so i go over there and this was i can't remember saturday night Yes, Saturday night. So the last possible night. I'm just, I got to do it. I go over there. I give him the silver tongue. <laughs> you slip him the silver I tongue. I slip him the silver tongue. Big dude. Big scary looking dude. And uh, and saying like, I try to talk to him. I'm like, here's the idea. Whatever. I have a YouTube channel. This is it. I'm not going to get away. You know, you can go stand over there. I'm, I'm, you have shots of me running. Me ske sneaking in. I had this whole kind of like different script that I had in my head that I was going to say and stuff. And he was having nothing to do with it. And I'm like, can I buy a pizza? <laughs> His fucking pizza box is sitting there open. Three quarters gone. He already has pizza. I'm like, Damn. 
Can I buy ice cream? Can I buy a pizza for tomorrow? Can I buy a pizza for all of next week? <laughs> I was like, like you're playing hard to get. I'm gonna do it. And he's like, and at the end of the day, he's like, I he's like because I can't confirm that what you're saying is actually approved because I said it's not approved, but you know whatever. Um, I can't do it. He's like, I can lose my job. And I was yeah. like, I get that. I get that. I appreciate that. And then I was like, okay. Different thing. You stay here. You let me in there. There's no way I can leave the horseshoe. It's you're in my way. There's no way I'm getting to fuck around you, man, because you, you can crush me. <laughs> can I do something where I'm just inside there and then I'll make it work from there? And he's like, no, I can't let anybody in. Fuck, I can't dude. let anybody in. I was like, I was, I was a little bit destroyed because that was my whole video idea that I had come up with over the whole course of the convention. Yeah. I, like, I just want to fucking hold that sword. Man. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be like, ah, joke's on you. And I just fucking stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Get stabbed. <laughs> Get stabbed. Shanked him. This episode sponsor is the one and only Chimera Models featuring their new Kickstarter campaign, Tenebrae, Fate of Hysteria. Chimera is showing off a lot of new goodies with this campaign, including eight new figures in 75 and 38 millimeter scale, as well as some new Chimera color paint sets. The Kickstarter will feature the older Chimera colors, pure pigments that we're familiar with. The newest paint expansion released last Christmas, the two initial signature sets from Michael Pisarski and Danilo Cartacci, and a brand new set from Robert Carlson. The miniatures adhere to a dark gothic fantasy theme similar to Dark Souls or Elden Ring. Ooh, that's a hot take. It's mm -hmm. just jumping on that Elden Ring it's right nice. now. It's nice. It's nice. So even when you're taking a hobby break from getting crushed by Margit, you can still be immersed in the From Software world. The initial models in the campaign feature a female necromancer mounted on a beast, four warrior zombies, a paladin, and a barbarian, but more miniatures will come in the unlocked stretch goals. If Chimera hits their stretch goals, we'll see two new 200 millimeter busts, two more mounted figures, two other paint sets, and free painting tutorials from Mikhail Pisarski, Francesco Farabi, Robert Carlson, Eric Swinson, and Fabrizio Russo. The stretch goals for this campaign are absolutely stacked. The models are casted in resin and are super high quality, as we can expect from Chimera and Pegaso. All those wonderful brands have excellent casting quality. If you're watching or listening to this podcast episode on the day it releases, we're actually two days early. The campaign launches on April 20th and only runs for two and a half weeks. You can follow the campaign and get notified when it launches. There will be early bird pledges, so if you get in early, you get a discount, and there will not be late pledging. So if you want to pre-order these minis, now is the time. This will be the fastest way to get Chimera paint sets as backers will have their orders fulfilled before a lot of this product is available, even on their own web store. You can find a link to the Kickstarter campaign in the show notes or description below. Thanks for sponsoring this episode, Chimera. Now on to the news segment. All right. So John kind of mentioned it earlier, but I wanted to say in kind of an official capacity here in the podcast that we are both involved in the Horus Heresy Weekender event that's releasing that really new fancy big box. Yes. You are painting Conrad Cruz. So, yeah, Conrad Cruz, <laughs> the, the car. <laughs> uh, Conrad Kurz. Uh, John actually had his meeting with Andy, the community manager, before I did, like yes. the hour before, and yes. that motherfucker <laughs> took Conrad Kurz. I have the goddamn model in my closet. And uh, there it will stay. <laughs> although I will say I feel like you deserve it because you have like the fully painted army. I did paint that whole army. Yeah, so I feel like you deserved it. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do Dark Angels because I love, I love that whole like kind of like religious zealot vibe that mm. they give off. Um, and then I was like, also, I want to paint some green. And then I come to find out the Oopies. fucking Horus Heresy <laughs> fucking Dark Angels are goddamn black and red, which I paint enough of that. Um, <laughs> so I was kind of sad. And then later on, I figured out that it was expected of us to paint a Primark and like 80 bazillion models in this box. Just paint the whole box. And I was like, I can't fucking do this, Andy. And so I found someone else who appreciates Horus Heresy far more than I do to, to paint the box. And then I'll paint the Primark. Um, but... Hey. Andy never asked me to paint the box. I know. I just, you know. I'm like, cool. Yeah, John, John got a little bit of preferred treatment here, but that's okay. I worked it out. Um, so we're going to go to the mothership. To, the mo to fucking Nottingham, bro. Yeah. We're going to. We're First gonna, time. Yeah. We're going to go there with our Taco Bell short shorts. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to go into the pub and we're going to order something like chips and gravy and pudding. <laughs> gravy and pudding. Yeah, because apparently... Fucking spotted dick. Okay, so I learned this. That in England, 
pudding is just synonymous with dessert. Yeah. And also, there's puddings that aren't dessert. Because that shit makes no sense. Yeah, you got like Yorkshire Yorkshire pudding is like a, a baked good. It's not a pudding. It's not a liquid at all. No. And black pudding is a blood sausage. Yes. Both of those things are, are called, not pudding. Are called puddings, yet pudding is also could mean like ice cream and shit. Yes. Also, there's a weird thing with the word biscuit. Biscuit is like a, a different thing over there than it is over here. It doesn't matter. I, I talked with the boys, and I was like, you guys got to hook us up with the right football jerseys. So when we roll into that that pub, we don't get fucking you know, scalped. Yeah, right. That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Because yeah, you walk in there with an Arsenal jersey on, I don't, yeah, Man- you might die. What about Manchester United? Should we wear that? I don't know. That's a team, I, I think. Know. I think. I don't know. He, he gave a, it's called, I think, Nottingham Forest is the name of the club that we have to care about. Nottingham Forest. Yeah, so we gotta get some jerseys. I should just go in there dressed up as Sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that that's the thing. We were watching Robin Hood <laughs> Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yeah, and like they are all about Nottingham, which yeah. is where GW is from. Right. I love that. We could dress up like uh like Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yeah. I'm sure they would be like, Oh, we appreciate it. Okay, so there's a bit of there's a there's a bit of tea surrounding this event a little bit. A lot of a lot of backlash from the community, the Horace Heresy community involving people who aren't real fans of Horace Heresy, which is like basically us right here. These guys. But to be fair, you know, the event is also a celebration of the models themselves, and we are miniature painters. Right. We love painting miniatures. Primax are awesome subjects to paint. They're fucking huge and amazing. These new plastic bottles look fucking bananas. They are fucking awesome. The characters in those boxes are awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I was talking to a couple other creators that were involved. I don't want to name them in case they want to be named. Um, but yeah, they were getting a lot of fucking, a lot of hate for being invited to do this and not being real fans. And so a term got made up for okay. these fake fans it's called okay. new heresy and you heresy. Oh my God. For the fucking newbies who aren't, aren't real fans. Okay. Can let the record show. I'm not a fucking fan. <laughs> so don't, <laughs> don't say that I'm doing this cause I want to be a fan. I like cool models. I like Games Workshop plastic. I like that they're sending me over the mothership and I get to go to fucking Warhammer World. And fucking hang out. This is fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, That's that. Yeah. Next. (laughs) Next. Squats. Fucking squats. I put squats in the news because those little fucking dwarfy boys are back. Could you imagine a worse day of the year to announce squats being back than April 1st? It's kind of like, wait, is it a joke? Is it real? Yeah. I think this isn't the first time that GW has done this when they do an April Fool's, but then it's extra real. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, I think they did with the Sisters of Battle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Plastic Sisters. (laughs) Psych! The two most anticipated thing, Plastic Sisters and fucking Squats, they put out on April 1st. Nice. And then they, they, after all the hype, and then, oh, it's April 1st, and then like a day or two later, they're like, we were real! It's (laughs) fucking coming! It's a little midget man! (laughs) Yeah. Do you care about Squats? I don't know. I wasn't around long enough to like know if they're cool or not. But yeah, like, I, I really dig that model. He looks cool. I don't know. I'm just I. My brain is all like golden demon brain right now, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I have three squats and a squat, a squat, squat, oh, squat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what works for golden? Demon? I, I need one of them doing a position of him doing a squat as a squat. <laughs> yeah, dude, yes. Just add like a fucking bench, and he's just like fucking squatting some yeah. huge <laughs> amount of weight. That'd be so funny. Oh my gosh, I would love that. Uh, we also got more Chimera paints. Yeah, which, which we just learned it, about <laughs> in the ad spot. <laughs> the ad spot. Yeah, so they're having that new set for Robert Carlson. Um, so there's just there's just so many Chimera paints now. You know, you could you could own what 40, 50 Chimera individual paints now. I own them all that are out. You so, have the expansion set. Uh, yes. Nice. I have the regular set. I have the expansion set, and I have the. Cartachi and the land set. Nice. I have everything. It's probably about 30. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. All right. No, all right. The expansion one is the, the first expansion <laughs> one is really nice because it's more pure pigments, especially in the browns. Pure pigments? The, pure pigments. In the browns and oranges scale, that there's a lot of pure pigments. You're talking about the siennas and the yokers and mm. the, all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. that they just didn't have. And yes, in that initial Chimera paint set, you can mix those colors. I was like, God damn, I don't want to bring out three paints just to mix brown. God damn. I don't want to have to do that. And, and you actually like, can't mix those paints exactly because they're a pure pigment. Right. It's like you can make a brown, but now it's like you got regular browns. Yeah. You like them browns? Oh, my browns on browns. Oh. <laughs> and that concludes our news. <laughs> and that's all the news. All right, we're here at the end of the PCAST with the goody PPs 
talking about TendyCon. Mm. I just said all the words that Scott hates in one sentence. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it was pretty that was pretty terrible. I'm suffering right now. Yeah. And I'm sad that we don't have all the goody peepees here with us like we did last time. I want every episode to be like that. I smell tendies right now. Though. I smell tendies, dude. I smell canes <laughs> up in my nose holes. And that means we're going to end the podcast. Before we end the podcast, Scott, why don't you shill for us a little bit? Yes. If you like the podcast and you want to support it, there are many ways to do it. Some free ways to do it is you can watch ads on our podcast. We have an ad every 30 minutes that we play. And if you whitelist our channel, you'll watch it and make you a little, a little bit of kickback whenever you, whenever you watch one of our ads. If you got some shekels that you want to shell out our way, there are ways to do that as well. You can uh, support us on Patreon, which gets you access to an extended version of the podcast where we talk about things like awesome miles we've seen from other painters throughout the last two weeks. We also give feedback to one of our community members. We also talk about new things we tried and explored in the hobby and the craft and how we fucked it up and how we did it great. Yes. Uh, but also, as a uh, patron of the podcast, you can submit topics for us to discuss and also the miles for us to give feedback on. Uh, another free way to support the podcast is you can uh, talk about your nerd friends. Talk about us with your nerd friends. Don't talk about your nerd friends just randomly. It's kind of <laughs> fucking weird. Uh, talk about our podcast with your nerd friends. Give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts and stuff like that. And yeah, support us. Give us your fucking dollars, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. What, 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 what am I to you? <laughs> okay, well, I got I'm Cloud. I'm like, uh, uh, fuck it. John, take it away, man. <laughs> All right. Respect me. <laughs> Before you know it, it'll be another fortnight and we'll have another new episode of exciting things to talk about. And until then, we'll catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs>